The Fable and Folly Network supports creators of exceptional audio stories, including the one you're listening to right now. If you love our shows, we want to hear from you. Complete our listener survey at fableandfolly.com slash survey. This will help us learn more about you, what you like, what you'd like to hear more of, and how we can maintain an inclusive, safe atmosphere. As a thank you for your participation, we have extras and behind-the-scenes content from your favorite shows. Fans make the network what it is. Thanks for listening, and we can't wait to hear from you. Find our listener survey at fableandfolly.com slash survey today. <laughs> the word of the day is... All right, cock. yeah, I'm going to need... Yeah, there's a lot of cock in mine, so that's going to be... Right, how about balls? We got I balls got or it. cock? Uh, mostly cock, but there are some balls. Okay, so the ball um, quota is met. That's a good thing. I'm not, I'm not gonna share. I've got a lot money. of like titties and buttholes. Titties, buttholes, <laughs> all sorts of good, <laughs> good areas, areolas. I will say, cock is within the first eight words of my story. That is a good place for it to be. I remember anything. Hold on. It's, it's an incredible cock, place for it to be. A cock sheath action. Cock sheath. <laughs> Which. 69. 60. Check one, two. Check one, two. Check one, two. Six nine. These nine. nuts, bitch. Damn, it's been two years since our last episode. <laughs> oh, been two years? I had to fucking fly all the way so to Colorado just, call it, just, call it just to reboot. fucking get you guys to write something. Hell yeah. <laughs> I wrote mine today still. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote it like five minutes ago. But I added to it. I mean, Cut it real close, but you know what? You got it done. Reboots are popular these days. They really are. Yeah, these stories have been brewing, though, for two years. Yeah, in our bands. Oh, yeah. And yeah. in our sacks. And in, in our sacks. <laughs> and like an unwanted child, they're coming. <laughs> <laughs> it's not too late to turn off the episode now. <laughs> We're waiting. <laughs> it's gonna be a wild one. <laughs> uh, um, anyway, yeah, so I got, I got five movie. people in this room with me today. Uh, I'm gonna go from my uh, rightmost to leftmost. Fuck it, it doesn't matter. There's no directions in audio. Uh, we got Keegan <laughs> back for his second episode on the pod to continue his fucking epic tale. We got the OG Connor uh, Walters, and of course one of the original founding members, fucking J Radical Walter Roth himself. Right here. Hell yeah! And uh, we also got a special guest all the way from Florida with us. Hell yeah! Uh, What's from up, the Wizard Scroll, we got Chris R. R. Bowser himself. That's the name. Don't wear it out. It's fucking. <laughs> it's a pleasure and a treasure to have been crashing on your couch the past couple days. I'm fucking pumped to be here. So stoked to be here with all you guys right now for this fucking oh, yeah. banger of a night. If you had to put a number on the percentage of time 69. in the na- in the last few days you've been sober, what would that be? Mm, call it like ten percent. Ten percent. Ten percent is a good. Yeah, that's a nice round sleeping. number. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was sleep. I was I was inebriated while sleeping. Yeah, probably. sleeping's kind of its own drug. Yeah. Yeah. It's ter- yeah. yeah. But we don't count waking hours only. Like from yeah. the time it takes me to wake up to get up to this room. The bong nook is right there. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. so it's like a solid maybe 45 seconds every morning. Yeah. <laughs> you can see it. <laughs> I think it's a little less than 10%, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I had to give it the I had to give the conservative estimate. My mom listens, maybe. <laughs> I, I hope, hope not. I just I hope not. My mom would not approve. Yeah, on the way here, my girlfriend's like, oh, I really want to hear your stories. And I was like, no. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's going to Okay, happen. so anyways. Yeah. Anyway, this now, definitely isn't an erotic fiction about sea creatures. <laughs> now, uh, Chris, I actually I heard a rumor lately that the beverages we're consuming tonight are actually illegal in your homeland. Oh, why, yes. The, the, the 40, the, the classic Mickey's 40 fine malt liquor. In the state of Florida. The lands of Florida? In the land, the, the realm. mystical realm of Florida. <laughs> it is illegal to sell alcohol in a container larger than 32 ounces. But wait. Also, less than 128. So, w- from if you have a 33 ounce bottle of something, that's not legal. If you have a keg, you're good. Oh, okay. A 40, f- unfortunately, falls in between. Had to be taken out of the of the rotation. But you know, this is my second ever 40. First one was last night. This one, I'm liking a little bit more. Oh, shit. I had what? the oldie yesterday. Hey, hey, the Mickey's, dude. The Mickey's. At least you can still buy weed in Florida, right? Uh, yeah, I got the med card. <laughs> <laughs> and that brings us to our first sponsor, Mickey's 40s. <laughs> uh, if you haven't had a Mickey's, liquor. go to your local gas station, except in Florida, and buy one. <laughs> If you're in Florida, tough luck, get eaten by a gator. And our second sponsor, Old English, also a 40, but they come in plastic bottles that you can turn into bongs. Yeah, we got the 42 ounce Oldie, I'm looking at it right now, we got a bowl sticking out of the top, there's a hole on the bottom, 
You light that shit, you smoke that shit, you rip that shit, you're fucking good to go. It's high gravity. Fun fact, that's where the name Bongstone came from. Yeah. I yeah. just made that up. Bongs. I don't think that's true. <laughs> <Yeah>. but <laughs> I mean, if nobody came up with gravity bongs, I don't know. You never know how that word turned bong. out. That's a weird word. Okay, moving We're on. <laughs> oh, also, we forgot our third sponsor, Recreational Legal Weed. We yeah. Love yeah. yeah, boys. Oh, we sure do. Thank you, Joe Biden. Yeah. <laughs> if it wasn't for Joe, this show wouldn't be possible. I'd still be in prison. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so <laughs> all right, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> what do you say, we uh, fellas? We transition here into our first tale of the evening. Let's fuck this We've got up. quite the fucking the roster lined up. We got five tales here for you. It's gonna be buckle a fucking. Up. I hope you're in a two-hour car ride. Right right? Buckle up, buckle <laughs> also, up. If you if you ever heard a story from me before, Connor, then you know mine are always way too long, and today's no exception. Hell and yeah. I apologize in advance. I just don't know what the fuck. I don't know how the fuck to not do it. It's you know, all it's all gold books. though. It's all gold. The yeah, whole mm -hmm. we're giving away free audiobooks. On Spotify. You're welcome. <laughs> Wait, people are getting the shit for free? Yeah, we're not yeah. charging anyone. Yeah, we're not actually sponsored. Are we? Yeah. <laughs> fuck. No, oh, Jared, shit. Jared just bought these on the way over. <laughs> Alright, fuck oh. this. I'm flying home. <laughs> Wait, so you have to pay him back for this 40? Well, that's between family. No, he bought, he bought like a $7 bud like two weeks ago. I so did? I swear, yeah. Are you making out like, Jared, make sure you pay me back for the $7 beers with David Musters. Oh, oh okay. I probably that probably happens to me like once a week. <laughs> <laughs> the money I'm hemorrhaging from my bank account. Oh my god, no! I never buy a beer without buying four more for my friends. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Right. We digress. Like All right, we can digress. digress. Let us, let bit. us. Uh, Some fucking music. Oh, yeah, that's in, ten, that's in ten years for me, so... No. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Anyways, moving along to the first story. We are going to be leaving Colorado and traveling to the mystical realm that we all know as Bongstone. Oh shit, yeah. This story comes straight from Bongstone, and it is called Trial by Blood Ball. Blood Ball? Yeah. Oh, the prompt! The prompt! Oh, <laughs> given prompts many moons ago. Many moons ago, yes. Those prompts were uh, crimes. Capital crimes. Crimes of the capital variety. Meaning. Meaning that if you You break, die if you commit them. It's murder. murder crime. Crime. Worthy yeah. of death. The you sentence will, is death. You get to die. Murder, Correct. treason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is a big deal. Jaywalking. Yeah. Buying yeah. a 40 yeah. in Florida. Yeah. Buying a 40, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, and and, our, and, and islands. Fuck. And islands. Our other one was islands. So to wrap so. that up, capital crimes and islands. Capital crimes and islands. Hopefully, yeah. Yeah. And once again, the title, good sir. Trial by Blood Ball. In Sick. the future, when I say those three words, it's going to be only one word. I'm going to say it really loudly because it's very important. Okay. Yes. So this is Jared Walters. Jay this is Jared Walter. Walters. J. J. Radical Walter Roth. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good name. Okay. <laughs> this is a tale of the wildest. Most ball slappinest, stinky, slutty, sweaty, 40 day pygmy gnome pounding orgy that the realm has ever seen. <laughs> I'm so. Wow. We're off to a great like start. A pygmy gnome, really? A pygmy gnome. So, like, a gnome's already That's, small. Okay, this is in the first two sentences. I'll, you'll, you'll learn. I should have been there. <laughs> All I'm saying is, I wasn't that excited like two hours ago, and I should have been, because I'm so excited. It's always oh, yeah. great. It's always great. It's always a good time. Speaking of times, once upon a time. <laughs> a super gay half elf bard named Gaylord McBaba Bowie. Here we go. All right, we're gonna put some bleepers in. Right. <laughs> Wait, or, or you can just come out as gay right now, then you can say it. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> Gaylord McBaba Bowie traveled to the realm of Bongstone. <laughs> <laughs> He sang a glorious ballad of a mystical island across the great sea of pussy 
which was allegedly inhabited by a race of dummy thick pygmy gnome babes who were naturally born with six vaginas and nine buttholes. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> and they were apparently all just the dirtiest, nastiest, nasty little whores. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> six? How many holes is that? I think we went in different directions. <laughs> <laughs> when, I just want I wanna have been there when you wrote that first sentence. <laughs> Like, were you a, are, we, are you okay? <laughs> we all make mistakes. Are you doing okay? <laughs> Not as okay as they are. Oh yes. <laughs> Barely taller than a barbarian's cock is wide. <laughs> 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 so like, okay, no, just keep going. The whip. <laughs> no. Baba Bowie. We called these creatures the slut maidens of Holy Island. Okay. To put it simply, the barbarians of Bongstone were intrigued. They immediately formed a raiding party and set off to the east to capture the port city of Fish Tank. They commandeered a hundred ships and ejaculated loads and loads of fresh hot barbarian seamen out into the sea of pussy, braving <laughs> mighty waves and terrifying tempests in a valiant quest to locate the fabled Holy Island. So, okay. So they just do they, off why do they... Into the ocean? They just jerk off because? No, or is no, that they're seamen. No, 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 no. They're seamen. They're seamen, okay. Yeah, we're saying they're going into the ocean, so they're launching seamen. Oh, uh, so uh, ejaculated. Uh, 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 it's a metaphor. <laughs> God, I'm taking it way too literal here. I had a way different picture in my head. <laughs> 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 oh, we heard the same first sentence, and you're saying liter you're taking it literally? <laughs> <laughs> well, regrettably. In their lustful excitement, they never bothered with learning how to sail ships, or even to swim. So honestly, a lot of thirsty dudes drowned on that first try. Okay. <laughs> and the second try was cancelled due to excessive hangovers caused by the first try. <laughs> the third was actually going pretty well at the beginning, until they made it out past the continental shelf, where they encountered a bona fide clusterfuck of razor-sharp volcanic rocks piercing through the waves like a thousand long swords through that foolish innkeeper who tried to cut you off last night. <laughs> that Aww. fucking bastard had it coming. <laughs> but the barbarians would not relent. Over the next couple months, the treacherous rock formation sank more ships than your mom had baby daddies. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot. And uh, it came to be known as the Great Cock Blockade. Oh, oh no. Oh my god, it's perfect. It's dangerous. Yeah. But uh, rather than wasting more time navigating around the perilous blades of stone, the barbarians just kept rushing straight down mid until eventually, <laughs> one <laughs> <of> the, <laughs> eventually, one brave little ship kind of sort of made it through okay. <laughs> the name of that ship was the SS Consentus for Beta Cucks. <laughs> Not Horsecock Jorge? Jorge Horsecock called that because of the shape of his member, not the size. Okay. Mm -hmm. Actually, so, by Bonstone standards, he was well below average down there. <laughs> Poor guy. And uh, at his side stood his sniveling, rat faced little shit of a first mate named Mr. Queef. Mr. Queef. <laughs> Wait, just to rewind, are you saying his horse looked like a dick? No, no his, his dick, his dick like looked like a horse dick. dick. His horse, I mean, that's what I meant to say. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> did you say that? I meant to say. Yeah, but anyway, it wasn't the size of a horse dick. It was the, it was the shape. No, it, it wasn't the, the size, it was the shape of a horse. His no, dick, his no, dick was the shape of a horse. It was a horse shaped dick. No, his dick. No, I understand. Don't explain it. His dick is shaped like a horse's dick, right? Connor gets his it. His dick isn't shaped like a horse's dick. Yes, it is. Dick. The, 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 it, it nays and has a mane and everything. Okay. This is, I like this that better. Little shit of a first mate. Mr. Queef. Was. <laughs> <laughs> he was a slippery and nimble little man. <laughs> Queef. Mr. Queef was well known for his inhuman speed both on land and in bed. Oh, <laughs> that will be important later. Okay. He also had a super teeny tiny little wiener. <laughs> it's like the opposite of my last story. <laughs> The ship's quartermaster was a stocky caramel brown Mexican man <laughs> with a dope handlebar mustache and literally at least 500 daggers strapped to his belt, legs, and chest. Ooh, that's a lot of daggers. Nobody knew his real name, so everyone just called him El Cuchillo Tigre. Ooh. Ooh. I like him. 
the knife tiger. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you ever seen a knife tiger with a knife? El Cuchillo T. Greg gave no fucks and took no shit. His wiener was statistically exactly average size. Oh, ah, uh, just finally. Mine. Just some hope. Know. After sailing in circles for what felt like an eternity, the crew finally heard the satisfying call from the crow's nest. Holand! <laughs> Holand! 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 Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Bravo. Yeah, found it. How did we not think of this before? <laughs> I might have made that a similar joke. Yeah. Yeah. Of Holand? Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if we have a lot of similar jokes just based on the theme. But anyways. No, anyway. Like, well, eventually, the sailors figured out how to douse the sails and weigh the anchor. And the crew finally made land. <laughs> it sucks so bad. Wait, the sails are on fire? <laughs> have you never been on a boat? <laughs> Does that happen often? It makes it go faster. Everybody knows. Yeah, because yeah. the like, heat rises. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. A hot air balloon shit. It makes oh, perfect okay. sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the crew finally made landfall on Holy Island, and let me tell you, it was just the tits. The oh, fuck yeah, the tits. Oh, point all my abs. Damn, if only we videotaped these. Yeah. <laughs> So, Mick Baba Bowie said absolutely nailed the script. <laughs> it was all totally fucking true. So, they felt kind of bad for crucifying him, but not like super bad because he was a half elf bard. After all, like, be a whole elf or be nothing, dude. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but to be clear, he was not crucified for his sexual orientation. Okay. Good Even in Bonks, them and everyone knows dicks are magnificent. Yeah. Uh, so, for 40 days and 40 nights, the barbarians. Fucked every hole on Holy Island with bestial ferocity, including each other's, but not like in a gay way. Oh, okay. <laughs> right, 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 yeah. right. It was on an island, so it doesn't count. Exactly. What, you got it right there. What they didn't realize <laughs> was that the pygmy gnome babes had lived in isolation for so long that they lacked natural immunity to the host of vicious and virulent STDs, which the Bonks owners had illegally imported within their loins. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't check that test. Mm, nope. No. The, Sounds uh, like there weren't any customs. <laughs> no. Just like when Christopher Columbus sailed to America. Yeah. Uh, it's Columbus Day we found I out, know. by the way. Oh, <laughs> Today. Okay, yeah. This is like uh, extremely uh, fitting. But we, uh, we yeah, love not mentioning it. It's actually Indigenous it. Peoples Day. Yeah, it's actually, I, I thought it was Veterans Day. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> is it Veterans Day? <laughs> this uh, doesn't. Every day it should be. That was, yeah, uh, okay, okay. The worst of the bunch was a fairly common ailment among sailors known simply as Spicy Dick. Oh, oh fuck that! Have you ever had that shit? Dude? I had a cousin who had that yeah. back in '06. It's and not his dick like, fell off. Not oh, it's, not. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's a mild inconvenience to a mighty barbarian, and they can just handle it. But spicy dick was a veritable death sentence for the poor little two and a half foot tall slut maidens. <laughs> slut, wait, what were they called again? The slut maidens of Holy Island. The pig, pig, two and a half tall pygmy gnomes. Yeah, got it. The native population of Holy Island was ravaged by the disease, and within a month, 90% of the locals had succumbed to spicy dick. This is just a Columbus Day story. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote this yeah, like a year and a half ago. Year. It was not Columbus Day, and now it just happens to be like the perfect story. Yeah. Hey, no such thing as mistakes, just happy accidents. But do you remember the prompt? Capital crimes. Oh, that totally Ooh, crime. That's so, where this story diverges. Don't Anyways, even worry, I, that, guys. We're, I'm getting ahead of myself. The remaining 10% of the slut maidens starved to death or died of internal injuries they sustained during the 40 day orgy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Naturally, so, naturally. I hate naturally. when that happens. Their dicks are as wide as they are. Like, the, as yeah. wide as they are tall. Well, no, I think they are as wide as dicks. Okay. Their dicks aren't as wide as they they're, are. Let's just say they're was, comparable in size They're to comparable, yeah. and the slut maids are two and a half feet. You can't take a hundred feet. These motherfuckers got nine. space. Not tall right. for a pygmy gnome, but right. like... Yeah. All yeah. right. Well, after the last slut maiden had gone cold, Captain Horsecock finally gained some post-nut clarity and decided to call it a day. A 40-day? 40-day. 40-day, yeah. I'll drink to that. I already finished <laughs> The crew re-embarked on the SS Consentus for Beta Cucks, then got super drunk and fucked around with ropes and barrels and shit, and eventually set sail for the mainland. <laughs> Making it back safely to Port Fish Tank after a fortnight or so. Oh. He said fortnight. Dude, that was... That's <laughs> top <laughs> what are you fucking ten? Uh, Sponsor number four. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... Upon hearing tales of the glorious orgy and the terrible fate of the slut maidens, most of the other bonk stoners were straight up not super stoked on Captain Jorge and his crew. Yeah, they, they, they sound like all sorts of names, like pretty uncool, 
factually really lame, <laughs> and even violent, horny, genocidal maniacs. <laughs> oh no! That was a little too on the nose. But at the same time, like that's pr pretty accurate. It is. Yeah, it's it what is. they did. I'm gonna drop a line at pretty uncool. Pretty uncool. <laughs> Mm -hmm. that's, that's Pretty definitely uncool. Cool. <laughs> well, after mulling it over with shamefully dry dicks in their hands, the people of Bongstone decided that Captain Horsecock needed to be held accountable. I agree. The only problem with bringing these maniacs to justice was that Bongstone's judiciary infrastructure was somewhat primitive, oh. since they just settled their disputes normally by Mortal Kombat. Right. <laughs> Dead men file no Very lawsuits, right? Dead right. Dead right. men file no lawsuits. Flyman wins. In fact, <laughs> There was actually only one written law in the Kingdom of Bonson at the time, which was quite simple. Laws are for fucking dumb nerds. <laughs> <laughs> that is... <laughs> you know, we've solved law. God, imagine how much better America would be. <laughs> oh my God. Same Laws are for, for fucking dumb fucking nerds. Dumb fucking nerds. dumb nerds. Some Everyone outsiders... Law, PhD in law. <laughs> Some uh, <laughs> outsiders called that legal system uncivilized and barbaric, but can those fucking losers say their clan has a 0% crime rate? No. Didn't think so, bitch. Right, mm. because laws are for fucking losers. Because yeah. there are no laws. If you count, exactly. If you count the crimes with How laws, can you have crime if laws are fucking dumb? Yeah. You know? Dumb yeah, right? fucking nerds. Yeah. yeah. But, Barbarians take the crime into their own hands and laws into yeah. their own hands. Dead men found the lawsuits. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Well, since this was such a unique circumstance, they decided to pool some gold oh, shit. and hire a wizard from the Mightstone Thaumaturgy Union's Department of Justice and Butt Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> a real professional. He was called Magistrate Mordricus Muff Muncher, aka Mmm Tasty. <laughs> <laughs> And he was basically a skinny old weirdo smarty pants dude with a big nose and a dope wizard hat. And you could just tell from his aura that this dude bucks. Yeah. <laughs> page turning. We got real pages, ladies and gentlemen. actual pages in, uh, the, in the building. He also said that he was some sort of judge and promised to put on a public performance called a criminal trial or something <laughs> called capital crimes. <laughs> oh, what the ooh. fuck is that? So the barbarians spent the next couple of days constructing a brand new stadium to host the trial of the century. The architecture was heavily inspired by tales of the legendary Bilbo Boobylicious. Oh. <laughs> it was Bonstone's patron saint of motorboating and titty fucking. Oh. <laughs> I've heard of him. Lord of the Cock Rings. Yes. It was built <laughs> of roughly hewn lump roughly hewn lumber and a fuckload of fucking huge metal spikes just sticking out everywhere and it was seriously fucking dope looking and four times bigger than you're imagining it right now. That's oh fucking God. right. It's so That's much, so big. It's so, so much bigger big. than I was oh. thinking it was. How much bigger is it compared to Dr. Drake in times? Be I think four times. Dr. Drake was three times bigger than you were imagining. Yeah, so that's four times bigger. That's, that's even, even bigger than But this, is a, this like, is a stadium, not a dragon. I don't know. It's <laughs> real, 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 real just, big. It's big as fuck. Uh, I'll, I'll settle for that. Yeah. Uh, after days of backbreaking labor, the final nail was driven into the lumber. Like a female Asian driving to the liquor store in a church van full of kimchi and live catfish. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's it's a more confusing than I even was before. Basically just like not very well. Okay. <laughs> driving poorly? Yes. Or were they are they even driving or poorly that... driven nails, poorly okay, driven okay, van. Okay, okay, okay. Smell oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Fish and kim cheese. Okay. Distracting. The massive yes. behemoth of a structure was christened the Titty Dome. <laughs> titty Dome, hell yeah. Mere minutes after its completion, mobs of insanely drunk and horny townsfolk rushed into the stadium and the trial could finally commence. I hope they get fucking the death penalty. I will see. <laughs> In the realm of Boston, <laughs> there is no crime because there are no laws. Magistrate Mordricus Muffmuncher has devised a brand new legal system unique to Boston, tailor-made for a barbarian code of ethics. This cutting-edge criminal procedure combines the civility of a courtroom with the mesmerizing brutality of full-contact sports. <laughs> Where rules can be changed or ignored at any time for any reason and the sword is always mightier than the pen. Hey. So, welcome to the Titty Dome. Bitches and bros, the only courthouse stadium where ferocity beats fancy words, brutality trumps logic, and laws are for fucking dumb nerds. Yeah. The only sport with no rules, no penalties, where the only way to win is not to lose. And now, put your hands together for our championship teams of all-star litigators. They're entering the courthouse and being sworn in now, so let's get ready to rumble! Top off your mugs, drop your piss, and have a seat. Because, ladies and gentlemen, drum roll, please. This is Trial by Blood Ball! Yeah! Let's go. <laughs> oh my god, dude. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god.
was incredible. I'm, 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 I'm there. Look, I'm, I'm in. The dogs are even paying attention. <laughs> oh, that was, it was <laughs> half Law and Order intro, half Sunday Night Football. I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Honestly, there's actual football going on right now, but I don't give a fuck. That All is we have Blood Bowl. All I want to hear is Blood Ball. And yeah. now, introducing for the prosecution, your home team. That's right, it's the motherfucking Bongstone Butt Blasters. Yeah. yeah! Home team. Led by their mighty captain and high warlord, it's number 69, motherfucking oh, yeah. Ronjar Thunderblades. Yeah, oh, so. shit. Entering his name into the record since he murdered the appointed prosecutor outside the courthouse. So, <laughs> <laughs> no actual lawyer for the people on this one, but that's okay, because that guy was such a dick. And Throndjar is super buff and slays Poon all day long, so he can definitely handle this shit. Dude, that lawyer is probably totally fucking a nerd. I would dude. trust this guy with Total life. fucking nerd. He's fucking dead now. So yeah, yeah. Dude. Good riddance, nerd. Death yeah. is for nerds. And on, the defense, nerd to me. on the defense, here comes the loathsome Bongstone Black Lives Don't Matter. <laughs> oh, no, I, was, I was about to boo, but now I don't know. <laughs> no, Black Lives Don't Got It. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this is the former crew of the SS idea. Consentus for Beta Cuts. And I understand these things are very offensive, but these are the bad guys in this story, just to be clear. Yeah, right, correct. They, 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 they genocide the slut maidens. Yeah, yeah. We don't like them at all. Mm -hmm. They stand accused of the capital crime of cock blocking in the third degree. Oh. And also, Class B misdemeanor petty genocide in the second degree. Petty genocide? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're pretty small. It's kind of yeah, they're two and a half feet tall. Damn, it's the Nuremberg trials all over again. <laughs> With <laughs> number sixty-nine, to... Captain Jorge Horsecock at QB, and number sixty-nine, El Cuchillo Dige all... at center. <laughs> they're, all, they're all number sixty-nine. <laughs> They will stand trial <coughs> with their shitty, dumb, nerd lawyer, Sir Richard Rasmutasler. <laughs> <laughs> He's also their offensive line coach. <laughs> His honorableness, mm, Tasty, the ultimate adjudicator and head referee of the match, approaches the bench wearing a glorious flowing judge's robe adorned with vertical black and white stripes. Mm. His trusty bailiff slash professional executioner slash sports announcer Boris bitchin' hairstyles with a Z <laughs> was wielding a massive battle axe inside the jury box super dangerously and his hair looks sick as fuck while he's doing it. Oh yeah. In the case of the Bongstone Buck Blasters versus Bongstone Black Lives Don't Matter, I'll rise for his honorableness, Judge Tasty! Yeah! Shouted mm. Boris, but nobody did, so they just kept going. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, citizens, to the first inaugural People's Court of Bongstone, a.k.a. Trial by Blood Ball! Yeah! Blood Ball. Announced Judge Tasty. Now please be seated. But they were already seated, so that worked out. <laughs> I've come here today to preside over the trial of one Captain George Jorscock, accused of heinous crimes against your dicks and also the slut mains of Holy Island. Is George present? He asked. It ain't George, it's Jorge, you whore like your whore mother! Say it right! Jorge responded. <laughs> Wait, is he from Mexico? Uh, so, Sounds like uh, he's from just north of Schmexican. <laughs> <laughs> Not by much. Maybe he's out of Schmexican. <laughs> anyway, bad mood, dude. Hey, at least my mom is getting laid, you pitting me raping fuck stick. Tasty was quick to retort. The <laughs> <laughs> honorable jury of twelve prepared to hear testimony and catch fly balls, he asked. As the terrified jurors ducked and dodged between Boris's super sick axe juggling tricks. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, there's only 11 in the box now, boss, and that is my bet. He killed one? Jane Schlop! Wait, fuck. Actually, now there's 10. Is that gonna work? <laughs> so that's pretty even number. You were good. Well, now there's only 10 left. Is that gonna work? Boris replied sheepishly with blood dripping from the edges of his sick double bladed battle axe. Well, I suppose we haven't set a precedent for jury size, and, but now that I think about it, an odd number would be better so there's no tiesies. <laughs> Kills a third guy. And once your honorableness, Boris spun around, spun around real quick and beheaded three more jurors. <laughs> <laughs> He's one. making it odd. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, 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 no tiesies. No, yeah, but no, if you kill three, guaranteed to be an odd number. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. Always. Man. Well, he beheaded three with one mighty swing of his axe and a skillful flourish at the end. Mm. The yeah. crowd roared in excitement. Boris saw at least three dozen titties drop, and this was all before the kickoff. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, thank you, Boris. Please step out of the jury box now, because we're going to need some people to vote at the end. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Boris complied. 
And then after the national anthem, Judge Tasty called the legal representation slash team captains up to the center line of the courtroom to commence with the coin toss, which would determine which team got to make their opening statements first. Oh, is a speech? <laughs> opening statements? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, it's football for sure. Well, it's blood. No, it's also it's, the it's law. Blood. It's a court of law. Yeah, it's a court this of law. Also, <laughs> sports. This mm -hmm. is a criminal trial. Yeah. This is how you make it interesting. Speeches are not for nerds, but they're close. Anyways, Thronjar yeah. very easily won the coin toss by chopping off Sir Richard's hands and just fucking eating them both raw <laughs> right in front of him while making eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> I told you you could handle this shit. Yeah, that's a W. Yeah. So the prosecution got the ball first and also got to pick which side of the courtroom they wanted to attack from. Of course, Throndra picked the side with the most bitches. Well, very well then, it's settled. Tasty tried it with a side. Boris, please pass the blood ball to the prosecution, and Thronjaw, you may now give your opening statements. War drums echoed through the courtroom. Birds fell silent, babies cried, and all the bitches moaned at the sight of Thronjar calmly approaching the bench. Oh, fuck. Wait, this is, this is where we moan, Keegan. Oh! <laughs> Can I get a hoya? He has been waiting for that. He turned on a heel to face the court, then... He whipped out his dick and rammed it right down Sir Richard's stupid, slutty mouth hole. Jesus! That's not that far from real football. <laughs> I'm pretty sure someone exposed himself. Uh, he then, uh, yeah. he then thumped know, his chest. His Who's name? Antonio uh, Brown. The guy whose cock was trending on Twitter the other week. Antonio Brown. <laughs> Antonio Brown. Just imagine being Antonio Brown. No, it's not his actual name, is it? Yeah. No, no. no. did you have? <laughs> no, I, lo I guess I lost it. Just imagine waking up, like being Antonio Brown, wake up in the morning, and then your body's like, dude, your cock's trending on Twitter. <laughs> it's just actually there, yeah. I mean, it seems like about the worst way to wake up. I don't think up. Twitter existed yet at this point. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. Um, but anyways, he then thumped his chest, let out the blood curdling battle shout while he skull fucked the shit out of that shitty dumb nerd lawyer slash <laughs> defensive line coach. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why we call him Rich the Bitch! <laughs> yeah! Uh, Ronjar shouted over the roaring applause from the crowd as he brushed Sir Richard's blood and tooth fragments off his hefty man. Oh, oh, wow. oh. <laughs> the crowd began to chant Rich the Bitch! Rich <laughs> the Bitch! Rich the bitch! Rich the bitch! The prosecution oh. rests, Your Honor. Just <laughs> <laughs> starting said, a chant and leaving with a sly <laughs> smirk. All eyes turned back to Sir Richard, anxious to see what, if anything, he could say to come back from the butt blaster's bitchin' opening drive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Drove something somewhere, all right. Through some gurgling noise came from the puddle of blood and viscera that used to be Sir Richard's face. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Uh, turns out, he couldn't say anything at all, because his jaw and mouth were wrecked by Thronjar's man meat. <laughs> and he couldn't even do sign language or try a forward pass either, because he had no hands now, so... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe come prepared for court next time, you fucking nerd. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's a real roughing the passer call. Are you listening, Tom Brady? <laughs> Well, I obviously see Tom trying to compete in this fucking shit. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's fucking totally a nerd. Dude. Blood ball. It's a different yeah. thing. Tom it's a different thing. Total nerd. Out for blood. I bet well, you so good. Because uh, Rich the Bitch fumbled his opener, the prosecution was awarded the victory in the opening statements right. round. Right, yeah. Right. Putting six guiltiness points on the board for the home team. Oh, Ooh, money yeah. Point, the kicker for the prosecution. Oh, my God. <laughs> Justin Fucker. Yeah. <laughs> You would like that better if you knew football better, motherfucker! Uh, he launched the ball perfectly between the witness stands, bringing the score to 7-0, and, zero, and awarding the butt blasters the right to call the first witness. Mmm. Mm. It's getting spicy. Soft. We should start doing, <laughs> this is just start doing all trials. Like Can we yeah. stop for a moment? This is amazing. Yep. This, I'm immersed. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm in, in the, the, jury for I'm in the, the jury box. Like actually, three guys just got beheaded. You can't I'm do chilling. real trials like this because this would have spawned like 20 more trials already. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking bro, fuck the defendant. <laughs> <laughs> Chopped his arms yeah, off. Yeah, then how's, how's he going to talk back if he has no jaws? You like know what? Yeah, that's yeah. a good play. This is the, probably the new meta. But that's okay because <laughs> that's why Bronchard became the new lawyer because he fucking knows what to do. He's a damn good lawyer. He's not a stupid fucking little nerd. Judge Judy to roll in here. Judge Judy. <laughs> the state calls Mr. Gaylord McFarlane. Oh, okay. <laughs> Almost dead. Shouted Thronjar. An eruption of boos and hisses came from the crowd. Boo. As the doors of the courtroom burst open to reveal 
Nobody. Ronjar has forgotten a very important fact, critically relevant. You may remember that Gaylord McBababoy was executed by crucifixion <laughs> the same day he arrived in Bonstone. <laughs> like, less than a minute after he put out his tip jar. <laughs> <laughs> so we can't exactly give testimony today, but that was also, like, basically years ago. So, like, you can't fault the man for not remembering the name of every single bard you crucify. Like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, man. Uh, well... It seems your witness has failed to appear, Mr. Thunderblaze, scolded Mmm Tasty. <laughs> and that's the safety. Two guiltiness points for the defense. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Two to seven right now, I suppose. Mm -hmm. The butt blaster's offensive line coach, the Ag Thundercock, immediately tossed a red flag, but the ruling on the field of there are no rules was held up in New York. <laughs> Tasty authoritatively. The defense now has possession of the blood ball. You may now call a witness if they so choose. Oh, God. Si, senor. We do have a witness to call, amigo. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> now it's El Cuchillo. I'm going to say the football references are so tough here. <laughs> if I watched football, I'd probably watch yeah, football. Oh, football. Right. Yeah. Incredible. I know just enough football, like, half of them. And the, the rest of the name Like, I'm just laughing when you guys laugh. Well, most of the time. I don't know if you have noticed, but this game works slightly differently than football. Yes. There are different things. But the, they're still good for the references. <laughs> yeah. Justin Fucker, well, best kicker in the league. Oh, Justin Fucker. Justin Tucker. Justin Fucker. <laughs> are we good? Hasn't missed yet. <clears throat> si, senor. We do have a witness to call, amigo, announced El Cuchillo DJ. The defense calls first mate Senor Queef. No. <laughs> Vamos, let's take this little dick up there. What are you? Is this a little slimy little rap boy? Yeah. Rap Mr. Queef is the slimy shitty guy. Yeah, fuck, yeah, fuck this guy. But he's very <laughs> fast. <clears throat> and bad and in general. Yeah. Well, not so fast, Mr. Tegany. Before the honorable court, here's the testimony of Mr. Queef. First, you must confirm the competency of the witness. The prosecution may now form their defensive line. <laughs> <laughs> And with a subtle nod from Thronjar, eleven burly barbarian man guides who were man gods who were mostly all black for some reason, <laughs> <laughs> broke their huddle and hustled past the bar, forming a mighty five-two line directly in front of the witness stand, all eyes glued on Jorge and the blood ball. Thronjar, Thronjar knew Mr. Queef was a clumsy butterfingered goat fucker. There's no way the defense would try a passing play to get him on the stand. No. Nope. <laughs> no way. 8, 9, Omaha, 4, 20, 69, fuck you, 10, hut! <laughs> and Tigre snaps the ball to Horsecock, and we're off! Both sides refuse to give up ground. Horsecock hands up to number 69, Leroy Lickamadickum, but it's a fade! A shovel pass to Peabottom! The pocket is collapsing fast. What will Pit Peabottom do? Eyeballs are getting gouged out, limbs are being severed, dicks are being horrifyingly twisted. Oh, the humanity! <laughs> oh my goodness. But what's this? Queef nimbly jukes a brutal cough slap. Cock slap. Cock slap. By number 69, Dante Dabernacle. He sprints at full speed towards the podium slash end zone. Oh no, his eyes are in the sky. Stone Skull and Painbringer in hot pursuit, but it's to no avail. Holy fuck, Queef is fast as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> He's fast as fuck. I told you it'd be a torch later. Yes. <laughs> number 69 sails the ball above the courtroom skirmish. Queef leaves over the podium. He snatches the ball out of the air just as Thunder Blaze comes crashing down on top of him. <gasps> oh god, I think I saw penetration on that chapel. <laughs> <laughs> Tasty throws his arms in the air. It's a defensive touchdown. Oh my and god. And it certainly appears as though the Black Lives Don't Matter kicker was slain during the play, and indeed he was. The defense will be disqualified from their extra point attempt. The guiltiness score is now under tantalizing eight to seven in favor of the defense. What will Thunderblaze do now? Oh my god, the amount of fucking references. <laughs> that that, that was just all reference. callbacks. I just like looked up the old stores and I was like, these no, guys live there, they're, they're, they're on the team. <laughs> number 69, baby. Number yeah. all 69. Like fucking blood ball, of course. Just one guy's number 70. <laughs> no, they're all 60. At one point yeah. I thought I saw full penetration. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you just tackle a little too hard and you slip it. Yeah, sometimes you it's slip just, it in. It just happens. That's, that's blood ball, baby. When you got six it's vaginas ball, on baby. the field, sometimes. <laughs> Mr. Queef had been pounded. Harder than an elephant, elephant cock pounding your mom's hairy butthole. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> pretty hard. <laughs> it's pretty hard. Oh my god. I don't know how I feel with that one. It took him a few minutes to shake off the unnecessarily rough and penetrated tackle by Thunderblaze, but eventually he settled in, prepared to testify. 
The court looked to Sir Richard Grasmatazler to begin the Black Lives Don't Matter's first line of questioning, but he was clearly just dead now. <laughs> <laughs> and a couple of Gucci goblins named Grundle and Taint were already snickering under the table while they sliced up his cock and balls for later. <laughs> I think it's up where. <laughs> microwave for later. Oh my god, these courthouses are so dangerous. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, well, taint only, only if you lose. <laughs> taint goblins. They got Taint goblins just hanging out. They are and Gucci taint. goblins. Yeah, Gucci taint goblin. and Grundle. The yeah. fleshy fun bridge. Grundle <laughs> yeah. and Taint. Yeah. <laughs> the fun bridge. The, uh, well, because of that, the Black Lives Don't Matter were forced to kneel the rest of the possession, and the ball was turned over by default. Mm. So, Thronjar approaches the bench once again. Oh, back up there. So, Mr. Queef, Thronjar inquired menacingly, <laughs> For exactly how long have you been a stupid little bitch? <laughs> <laughs> Objection! shouted Jorge. Lead in question, Your Honor! The fuck is this? A magical whistle blasted from the magistrate's podium. Flag on the play! Fuck! I thought there were no rules. Oh, piss off, you little cunt! Shouted <laughs> Tasty angrily, glaring wickedly at Jorge. <laughs> I thought it was clear that there were no rules in my courtroom, you doff twat waffle. <laughs> I find you in contempt of court. Half the distance to the goal, and Boris, would you please cut off this man's penis? <laughs> oh, oh, hate to see it. Don't be in contempt. But, Grundle and Taint were way ahead of him. Shing <laughs> <laughs> shing went the goblin daggers, and in an instant, Jorge's bloody, below average manhood flopped down on the courtroom floor, never to rape again. Oh, oh that's good. 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 Okay, yeah. So, what did it look like? Can you paint me a picture of this? <laughs> I think we should just move on. <laughs> and, uh, I think we should, we should let the, the listeners sunset. imagine and. and Think about yeah. what this looks I'm gonna like. let so you attempt to imagine. Just real quick, the two sides. I imagine like the horse shape where you get that curl at first, but then you said it's shaped like a horse. Like and then I just, I've had a balloon animal horse in my yeah. head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what I've like had. Like animals, animals, but that's your dick, you know? Yeah, it's like the best of both worlds. I was thinking like man cock sized horse cock. He mm. was thinking a cock shaped like a horse. I like your idea. I don't know. The, the balloon, balloon animal, animal cock, it just kind of fit after you said that, and now it's funny you're laying on the ground. All yeah. I know <laughs> is I, I apologize for letting you guys in on my extremely strange imagination. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, well, hey, this is the table inside thoughts come out, okay? Uh, yeah. oh, okay. Hey, this is not the last time you talk about horse cock. Everybody will know what it looks like when the movie comes out next summer. So oh, God. Oh, okay. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. We'll be, we'll be fine. Did you get Chris Pratt on that one? <laughs> he's he's uh it's a mean Chris Pratt. Oh really? Yeah, he's Can't actually fifteen different characters. <laughs> <laughs> All number sixty nine actually. Oh shit. No, Everybody yeah. else is played by Adam Sandler. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Tasty glared back at Mr. Queef. Answer the question, you gormless trollop, he demanded. Queef responded. Hey, yes, yes, your honorableness. Although I am unsure of how to answer, since I do believe that naming me a stupid little bitch is in fact a gross factual misrepresentation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mr. Queef stammered. Are you actually fucking retarded, Queef, tasty groan. <laughs> That's some logic in my courtroom, like seriously, you absolute fucking donkey! And the crowd began to chant. In contempt! In off contempt. his dick! In <laughs> contempt! <laughs> off his dick! <laughs> in contempt! I was trying to join in, but I was thrown off immediately. I, I should have. There were like... two parts of that chapter. <laughs> yeah, I went in too early. Alright, right. Grundle and Bungle, so go I for it. Not, like, <laughs> <practicing> <laughs> cut off in front of an audience. Fuck him up, fuck him up, cut his dick! <laughs> oh. <Magistrate. laughs> well, the magistrate peered around the courtroom, and finally his gaze fell upon Grundle and Taint once again, <laughs> brandishing their razor sharp scrotum slicers. <laughs> he gave them a nod. Guess how many would you mind? <laughs> I'm mouthing out the sound we're getting, effects. We're getting some extra, extra <laughs> audio detail. I'm fucking 20 ounces deep. I'm ready to go. <laughs> Bro, I'm on like, I'm almost past 60, dude. Oh, fuck. 69, perhaps? I'm, I'm, still number two. Next. I'm getting close, but I can't drink while I'm talking. Okay, I'm going to finish this. That's our yeah. fault. Sorry. Okay. Gentlemen, would you mind? Of course they don't mind. They're fucking Gucci goblins. That's what they do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the pocket was collapsing fast on Mr. Queef as Grundle and Taint scampered towards him, licking their lips in anticipation. The pressure was too much. Queef made a game-changing mistake. He fumbled the fucking ball. Like a stupid little bitch. Right, oh, yeah, yeah, right. Very. Clearly, we're on the same page. Thronjar right? knows, and Thronjar, with his lightning-fast reflexes, knew exactly how to capitalize. He scooped up the ball in one hand and sprinted back across the courtroom toward the Black Lives Don't Matter sideline. 
Front flipped over the bar, and with his free hand, he spread Rich the Bitch's stupid lawyer legs and just fucking spiked that blood ball straight up Rich's stupid nerd lawyer butthole. Oh, <laughs> How many points is that worth? 69 at least. Trial by blood ball! Blasted over the loudspeakers, and the crowd went fucking wild. Jeez. Two bitches just screamed until they passed out. Then the two-headed CPW started sucking off a two-dick lizard, man. <laughs> <laughs> It's a match made in heaven, honestly. Two heads, and then, uh, then it's for, for, for he. Just straight up sapukud himself. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, I'm saying these things. Are we saying them anyway? It's, it's been said. No one's ever gonna listen to this. Yeah, right. right, right. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, if that's what we're going listen. with, if that's what we're going with, okay. We well, have hundreds of listeners. Half of those are me, to be honest. <laughs> the guiltiness score was now 13-8 and eight for the prosecution going into the half. Thronjar strutted around the courtroom like the absolute fucking champion he was, just waving his gorgeous dick at everyone's faces. Oh, yeah. And licking every titty that was presented unto him in exchange. <laughs> <laughs> then, when it looked like the victory dance was wrapping up, Boris Pitching Hairstyles of the Z stepped up to the center field to make an announcement. Before we proceed, please take your seats and enjoy tonight's super slutty special performance presented by Dirty Dave's Dildo Emporium. <laughs> Dirty Dave. Is this the halftime show? This yeah. is the halftime show. And the bodacious Bongstone Bitchettes who said, bitchettes. Who said they're going to shoot cannibals out of their buttholes directly at the face of one lucky fan. Oh, that's, yeah, that's me. How about and the raffle? After an extended commercial break, the state will call an expert witness to educate the courtroom on the details of this case. This man is knowledgeable on the subject of genocide and probably cock blocking too, and here he comes now! Oh. A short, super sketchy looking dude with a weird thin mustache waddled into the courtroom. But for some reason, the crowd did not cheer. If this man was who they thought he was, then it was pretty much the same dude from our timeline, but he didn't kill himself in a bunker and escape to Argentina with the rest of the Nazi High Command. <laughs> <laughs> Do you just Hitler? Even the Bongstone. <laughs> We're in the middle of an announcement. We're making Hitler cannon. Even the Bongstoners <laughs> thought this dude was a fucking joke. An eerie silence permeated the, the stadium until Boris's voice boomed through the titty dome once again. So please, give a rip roar and Bongstone titty dome welcome to the one, the only. It's the motherfucking whitest of the white, Aryan of the Aryans, the master of the master race, and the motherfucking Fuhrer of Fuhrers! That's right! It's motherfucking Hitler! <laughs> I, don't, guys. I don't know if I should clap or not. What, are we <laughs> what have we become? Yeah, we just devolved so quickly. Please join us after the like extended one. commercial break <laughs> for more. Try my blood ball! That's it! That's the end! It ends at halftime. I was like, oh, you said it ends at halftime before we even started. Oh, oh, you know, oh, shows up. You just end on that. Oh, my God. God damn. This Holy is the shit. shittiest Pepsi halftime show I've ever I seen. Was, like, I had written like another paragraph that where I like, learned strong. German for like a day so that I could say I hate Jews and Russians. What? <laughs> and then I decided to end it at the half because it was already like nine what? pages long. <laughs> damn. Damn. Jared. Wow. Oh my God. What a fucking play. Yeah, was... Trial by Blood Ball. That was Dude, yeah. The home team is in the lead at the half. Sorry about the dogs ever. Everybody. Uh, I will say, man, I just went in a totally different direction. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna be honest. That man, was incredible. That was exactly what I expected. It was fucking amazing. amazing. Jared came in, dropped a schlong on the table, and that's gonna run away <laughs> victorious. <laughs> He's like, hey, listen up, you little bitches. <laughs> He's just like, alright, guys, sweet. You wanna hear some you wanna hear some fantasy fiction? You wanna hear a Welcome. fucking story? Welcome to it's the Kingdom. Clam. Clam. <laughs> wow. Wow. Holy oh shit. Our ducks, ducks. You love to know my not a good duck. Said about black people, well, I guess I said black lives don't matter, but also, you said that they're like a really good defensive linemen. They're the bad guys. True. Yeah, they're the bad guys. You're not supposed to like that. Right, black yeah. lives don't matter are the bad guys because then it's your beta cucks, bad guys. 
Yeah, yeah. exactly. Which is well played. I, yeah. Mexicans, not necessarily. I think I no. think El Cuchillo Taker is going to have a redemption arc. But the S could imply a lot of different S words, like sexy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sexy man. Well, that, that's canon, too. That's just South Bonk Yeah, South yeah. Bonk oh, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's on the map. Okay, so, so the fucking nerd fucking lawyers tried to make rules and everybody else fucking that's just a great, face that's a great them way to get to death. To death. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Seems like it. Everybody else like, fuck you, we're gonna fuck you in the mouth till you're dead. <laughs> Did I, is that about right? If you don't try to follow the rules, all you gotta do is look back at rule number one. Your laws rules. are for fucking dumb nerds. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 That, that was pretty clear. I learned a lot Yeah. Yeah. You so wait, I'm not about uh, law today. But yeah. you're telling me we don't get to know if they are convicted or not. That's not until so next, not so next till the movie comes out. Oh shit! <laughs> right. Oh, God. I can't wait to fly back here in nine years and figure out how this how this wraps up. Because like, they don't they don't have movie theaters in Florida. I don't know if you guys knew that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah right. They don't they have, have no movie theaters. theaters? They were all destroyed yeah. by the they hurricane. Don't even have electricity right now. Movie theaters are illegal. <laughs> <laughs> But meth isn't surprising. Yeah, meth yeah. isn't. Meth Mar is fine. Marrying your first well, cousin is fine. Meth. meth is good. Uh, 40s, no. Shit, dude, I fly over to Florida. You get some meth. You get a 31 <laughs> ounce beverage, not 32. Oh, you know? send you back home with a case for the yeah. road. Yeah, that sounds legal. <laughs> Just put it in my carry on. Yeah. <laughs> You're, you're, you're about 60 ounces deep. Too. All I'm saying is, good thing I didn't go later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm taking it slow for the same reason. This is a long worse, story. Always works. It always picks the best order. Yeah. yeah. It's a long story. I'm going to try my best to get through it as expedited as possible. Hey, just, mm, have, fun with it. just, don't just have fun with it. Have fun with it. Oh, we're fun with here it. for stories. Hey, right? we, the podcast is secondary to us having a good Yeah, yeah exactly. I'm having a great time. But also, make sure you get the accents right because I love them. Okay. Yeah. Yes. No, my job is easy and it doesn't matter tomorrow. Don't listen to that boss. But <laughs> whatever, I can stay up late. It's okay, it's Columbus Day. Yeah. Well, I didn't have to stay off. <laughs> that's probably that's probably good. I mean Well, I'm, I think that it means my company doesn't believe in Columbus, but Joe Biden signed a thing saying it's actually Indigenous People's Day, so I guess they hate them too. Oh shit. Oh shit. Yeah. So now your company's free. You know, it's fucked, but, but then you have to choose, right? Because you get Columbus Day, Indigenous People's Day, but we switched Columbus Day for Juneteenth. So like, mm. fair? June, yeah, yeah fair. fair trade. Fair yeah. Sure. What about See, my whole thing is, why not both? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, they're cheap. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Speaking of. Okay. Indigenous people. So, <laughs> capital crimes. <laughs> <laughs> capital right. crimes and islands. Island. Yeah. There was a second is, prompt, huh? And yeah. punishment. I didn't know about uh, islands. This no. is my story. <laughs> I'll it, true horn an island in, don't worry. <laughs> this is my story about islands and capital crimes. Bongstone City, year 1904. <laughs> but that doesn't mean like compared to Earth years, because like this took place way in the future, doll. Hell yeah, that's oh, what I figured. Oh, future Bongstone? Sci fi Bongstone. Oh. Case file 9669. The peculiar happenstance of the Dinkle Gobbler. Dinkle, Dinkle oh. Gobbler. <laughs> I've heard of him. He he makes shoes. I know right? him. Bongstone <laughs> City was one of a kind. <laughs> the thriving medieval metropolis was once a small village, but after many years of unchecked, horny barbarian rage fucking, it had become the largest <laughs> population center in the realm, the home to a wide variety of profitable medieval industries. It was forged by the most powerful of barbarian dicks and fueled by the most potent of magical drugs, which were produced by some of the weirdest fucking dudes. <laughs> After numerous instances of catastrophic citywide bar fights, the Crown had to step in and try to establish some sort of order, so they introduced a small local government and police force that eventually grew into the wide-reaching political institutions that they are today. From the fine, edible pastry bakeries of the West Canal, to the state-funded booby shacks on Keith Street. Mm. <laughs> Keith Street. Mm. Longstone City was overall kind of a pretty shitty place to live still, but that didn't stop anyone from going there to party. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And maybe do some business on the side. Business at the booby shack. It's Vegas. Yeah, it is. It is. 
Detective Falumbo. Oh was, god. <laughs> <laughs> detective Falumbo was Bongstone City's finest detective. He was an intelligent and skilled agent of swift justice. Don't let his appearance fool you. This short, scruffy looking half Jew half dwarf was all bite. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Falumbo really truly did not give a fuck about the possibility of death since he never figured he'd live this long anyways. Twenty years earlier, he had been thrown out of the Royal Bongstone Institute of Fighting Crime and Being a Badass Detective for being, quote, a heroin addict. <laughs> <laughs> That'll get you. That'll get you. <laughs> His only interest is intoxication. Oh my god, this fat boy won't stop banging the professors. Get him out of here. End quote. <laughs> <laughs> he used this rejection to motivate himself to become the best detective of all time. His thorough investigation skills, coupled with his disregard for any and all bullshit, had driven Falumbo's private investigation agency to become one of the most sought after practices in the realm. His office was located on the corner of Muff Breath and Nip Slip Avenue, on the south side, <laughs> far away from the royal phonies who lived up on Capitol Castle. He lived among the poorest and craziest citizens of the smoggy city in a three-room flat with a secret underground lair that was definitely not a grow-up murder dungeon. Let me read that again. <laughs> this is definitely not. I but have a suspicion. <laughs> <laughs> they might have been doing something illegal down there. Perhaps. No, it was no. definitely not a grow-up murder dungeon. Definitely. He liked living in the neighborhood mostly because the people around here party like all day and go fucking crazy all the time, dude. You see, Falumbo was more than just a method detective. He was a meth head detective. Like, <laughs> like this dude did drugs. Most mornings, Falumbo awoke with his head resting. I'm gonna go back a little. Right, you got it. Like most mornings, Falumbo awoke with his head resting on a half emptied flagon of fire wine in a corner booth of the slutty stank, the city's best shitty bar. He immediately whipped out his detective notebook and his finest wizard pipe, which he had bought from his wizard pal, Sid. Remember that? I mm. Sid. Sid. Sid He's... on my fucking face, more like... Sid. <laughs> but oh, like, do you guys remember Firewine? Mm. Yeah. yeah it's not wine. good. I remember uh, definitely not breaking any property laws on Firewine. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a capital crime? Uh, uh, depends on who not. catches you. <laughs> Is there an island involved? Palumbo skimmed his notes from yesterday's detective work, trying to find out what the fuck had happened last night, while he packed up a bowl with straight wizard crack because Palumbo was a savage <laughs> like that. Wizard crack. It's, it's early. Yeah. He's just doing wizard crack to start off the day. Yeah, start it off right, you know? It's like a coffee or a wizard crack, same thing. You gotta wake up, get in the zone. Get in the wizard zone. Best part of waking up. Was a crack in your pipe? Yes, sir. You Change know gears, it. get going, do some detecting. That commercial go. doesn't really it doesn't really ring, but you know what? That's a classic phrase. He giggled to himself as he perused the recorded happenings of the prior night, which included a fist fight with a werewolf and a bathroom bank sesh with an elven chick who was so slutty her pussy had a sign on top of it that said, "Please use other door." <laughs> the only problem was that one smelled like shit. <laughs> Only problem for some people. Yeah. <laughs> Fulombo had become so accustomed to being violently fucked up that he had turned into quite the effective inebriated note taker. Without his sharply honed shit house note taking skills, he would never have been able to keep up with all the goings on at the south side. He read through his notes and then looked over to the bar where two sexy dwarf college hoes were laughing to themselves. Hey Samantha, Jojo, thanks for the talk last night. I admire women who don't need to rely on men's sexual appetites to be interesting. Also, thank you for the blowjobs. <laughs> Top five. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> no problem, detective, and don't worry. I'm sure your friend Daryl will be just fine. Daryl? Wait, what the fuck? What the fuck happened to Daryl? Falumbo inspected his notebook more closely. As it turned out, his black friend, Daryl, oh. had had one too many tabs of wizard acid last night. <laughs> wizard acid, And everyone yes. knows that when you give too much wizard acid to a crazy-ass black magician, most of the time people die. Yeah. <laughs> that follows. Falumbo shrugged and slowly lifted himself from the table. He threw a handful of gold coins down behind him as he exited the bar and took off down the gritty castle alleyway back to the office. As he trotted along, he looked ahead to see, approaching, his sexy new European assistant, Franklin Buffbottom. They have, they have Europe and Bongstone? That's I think, new. I think Franklin Buffbottom is my favorite character in the whole Bongstone MCU. Franklin, the whole Franklin is... BCU. <laughs> BCU. 
Franklin Buffbottom was marching straight towards him. Or wait, wasn't he Canadian? He might have been Greek, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Canadian or, or yeah, Greek. Oh, no. oh, boss, I have some important news for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's Swedish. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's not Swedish, he's Franklin. He's, you're, he's foreign. Seems we got a super important case to get to now, bud. This one came straight from the tippy top, yes! Yes! <laughs> it's perfect. Don't stop from it. A fortune of gold is yours if you just find this one crazy guy. Ha ha ha! This is all written down word for word. <laughs> Franklin was holding a royal scroll and a short-haired kitty cat named Pussimus Maximus. Falumbo's agency had only recently begun bringing enough dough for Falumbo to afford a snazzy assistant while also supporting his just ridiculous daily drug use. Franklin was quite the attractive specimen, and although the detective was definitely not gay, he couldn't deny that the only reason he hired Franklin was due to his exquisite features and on-point sets of fashion. It made him feel better about his own appearance. And it just so happened that he turned out to be a HOMIE who had already saved Falumbo's ass on multiple occasions. Fuck yeah. Fuck Thanks, Franklin. You have an excellent haircut. Falumbo examined the scroll. <laughs> so... <laughs> the Dinkle Goblin has returned to the capital. Franky, this could be the biggest case of my whole career. Even bigger than that time that we broke into the evidence locker at the station, you know, looking for free drugs or whatever, and we accidentally discovered a secret magical peephole portal device that some people in the department have been using to spy on fine ladies' boobies and booty holes without them booty knowing. Holes. Not cool. Whoa. After Damn, the conspiracy fuck. case was over, Falumbo totally swiped the portal just to make sure no one could ever use it again. Mm. Mm -hmm. Now, like a good cop does, yeah. yeah. A forward thinker, yeah. Any other agencies know about this, Franky? Oh, you're the first one to know, honey bun cakes! <laughs> I treated the King's Royal Bounty Booker to, you know, a little hoo-hoo time, you know. Like I gave him a little peek in my jibba-jabba, he shivered like a spicy lady. <laughs> a little peek in my jibba-jabba. Thanks, Franklin, you're a freak. I gotta talk to Chief Bozo ahead and make sure I got all the information. The pair headed straight towards the unit, the investigations unit of the Bongstone City Police Castle. As Flumbo went to open the side door, he noticed four shady-ass figures chillaxing on the corner. He turned to see a gang of four rough-looking booger trolls who were posted across the alley, looking sketchy as fuck. Flumbo casually lit a cigarette, walked up to them with a smug, cocky look on his face. Do the look. Forty burp. <laughs> Fellas, oh. how's it going, you fine <laughs> troll homies? Enjoying the weather today? Falumbo, you have committed despicable acts of impurity with our chief sluttiest daughter, Mary Sue. <laughs> oh, <laughs> chief sluttiest daughter. These guys have watched me like, you have committed treason. <laughs> <laughs> we watched you do it. By the customs of our people, we must capture you and bring you to the girl's father to stand trial, said one troll. Damn, you know, I, I think you guys... I didn't think you guys would be interested in my repeated, persistent, just like absolute ferocious animal sexual advances on your fine princess or whatever. <laughs> you know, with all the <laughs> the last fucking I've heard y'all been partaking of as late. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what the fuck did you just say? Before the troll could finish his thought, Flumbo flicked his lit cigarette into the troll's eye. As it turns out, it was actually a magic fire poison explosion stick. <laughs> <laughs> One of Falumbo's many badass spy gadgets, which quickly melted the whole booger troll down until the only piece that was left of him was his fizzling, flaccid goober shaft. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, Jesus! cried another no. troll as he gazed on in horror. He turned to locate the detective and was met with a spiked brass knuckle punch to the forehead. The other two trolls shrieked in fear and started booking it down the street. That's right, you bitches better fucking run! I own this block, bitches! Go fuck yourselves and each other! Falumbo bellowed down the alley. And each other. <laughs> the two trolls were ironically closet homosexuals and ended up losing their queer cards that night to different guys. Wow. <laughs> Dang, bossy boy, you showed those thugs how a real man tangos! <laughs> Thanks, Franklin. I love your jacket. Let's go see the cheap. <laughs> Franklin knows he's got a nice jacket. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They headed through the department halls until they found their way to the office of Chief Bozo Head. A fat, dried-out, mustache old orc cop with a bad smoking habit. Falumbo and the chief had been roommates back in the day, and Falumbo took full advantage of their history together in order to get inside information. Detective, this better be good. 
The King's Royal Bounty Book has been up my ass all month long about these closed door engagements. You see, they don't want me helping your private ass. So ask me what you need to ask me, but make it snappy, pappy. She's bad. <laughs> How about I take however the fuck much time that I fucking want to, cocksucker, because I don't work for the government and you're straight up an asshole, bitch. Oh. That being said, let's try to make it quick because I got a case to crack. Go. Yeah, whatever. Float like your boat for Dumbo, you hamster ass brick, replied the chief. I need oh. everything that you have on the Dinkle Gobbler, Bozo. Well, for Dumbo, my boy, you sure have opened up a can of worms with this one here. Old Dinkle, that goblin bastard, has been slipping out of our grip for decades. We've tried everything. We've laid enormous mouse traps. We've, <laughs> <laughs> We've staged fake rap concerts. Even tried email bombing his mother. Nothing works. He still bombed his mom. He is simply uncatchable. As for his crimes, well, I'm sure you've already been informed, so I'll spare you the nitty gritty. But in layman's terms, let's just say he gobbles up people's dinkles. <laughs> <laughs> that is to say, their genitals. If that was in any way unclear, he seems to prefer the orc dicks, probably due to you know their size and superior physical dimensions. The Royal Bounty Booker was supposed to wait until tomorrow to post the contract. The reward is one free blowjob from the princess. And the hot one, too. Oh, shit. Oh, the hot oh, one. Oh, fuck. Oh, oh. We gotta catch this motherfucker. Oh, fuck. Yeah, boys. Let's go. <laughs> Get out the mousetraps. I'm full of Blows. Mousetraps. Bigger, bigger, bigger mousetraps. Number one. How did that fail? Their mousetraps weren't bigger. Mousetrap was too uh, small. Or they didn't use the right gobblers. We'll get them next time. Mm -hmm. Well, what I want to know is how your fucking private ass managed to get this information. I have my ways, Bozo. Falumbo glanced over at Franklin, who was giggling with a naughty smile on his face. <laughs> Classic Franklin. This is no laughing matter, you two fuck buckets. <laughs> you see, the Dinkle Gobbler has been terrorizing the realms for two years, and since he's been in the city, he has only been seen three times. When all three times, the people who seat him were high on ketamine, said the chief. <laughs> I, I thought he'd been escaping for decades, just to clarify. R uh, yeah. Uh, decades as in two years. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just reading the words. It's his mom's his mom's <laughs> canon. Time, decade is one time year. moves different on ketamine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah there exactly. you go. Well, this yeah. is also 1904, but in the future, so we can already have assumed that time works differently. Yes. Yeah, yeah. right. Oh, who fuck Don't you have any leads? Sorry, detective, but there just isn't anything to show you. Your best bet is to come the street. Sorry, come. Sorry. Come in the street. Come, come in, in the street. street. Your best bet Clogs is up to the sewer drain. So we can't escape. And we can't good. get in the drain. What if you come on the mousetrap? Oh, one. shit. There, there we go. go. Step one, jerk off in the street. Step two, mousetrap. Step three, profit. Connor's about to say. <laughs> <laughs> your best bet is to comb the streets. Do your, you know, your, your druggy detective act and ask around. Well, thanks for nothing, you goddamn worthless ass lousy queef snorter. Philumbo rose quickly and headed to the door with urgency. He knew time was of the essence, but it was 4.20, so he, Franklin, and the chief had a blaze for a sec. <laughs> Falumbo was back on the case. Naturally. Falumbo headed back to his flat and poured through his many records related to genital-related cannibalism in the city. After hours of searching and 14 lines of cocaine, he simply couldn't <laughs> uncover anything of substance. He thought back to what Chief Bozo had, had said to him about the gobbler. And then thought bubble. <laughs> He's only been seen three times. And all the times those three people were high on ketamine. <laughs> oh, ketamine! Ding! <laughs> My that whole was fucking it. goes off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <Yeah>. fuck. <laughs> all the people who had seen the goblin were high on ketamine, and anybody who with any street smarts knows that Bongstone City's Southwest Tower was the best place to get faced off the Special K. <laughs> special K! <laughs> 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 Best part of waking up. <laughs> special K. Fucking wizard crack. Special K. Special K. Let's go. Fucking better pairing than a fucking cereal and coffee anytime. The Southwest Tower had many isolated rooms on its numerous floors, making it a prime and popular location to dabble in remedial amounts of horse tranquilizer. Remedial. <laughs> <laughs> the gobbler had to be hanging around that tower. Falumbo went to grab his investigator equipment when his hands happened upon the old peephole portal that he had snatched from the evidence locker. Well, what the hell, he thought, just a quickie. He uncapped the magical device, took a quick peek into the portal to get an exclusive look at some revealing, steaming evidence, <gasps> not oh. boobies, you know, like the chambers of the Upper Southwest Tower, like, you know, Ketamine Palace of Bongstone, where he had the feeling that the Dinkle Goblin had been hanging around? Yeah, fucking sluts, you thought it was something else. <laughs> <laughs> 
He peered through the portal and searched every chamber of the upper levels and your mom until he came upon the small court. <laughs> Choking on his beard. Water <laughs> I had like four gulps of Mickey's in my mouth when you said that. <laughs> I'm glad he's checking on my mom. I'm glad. Excuse I'm, me? I'm glad he's making sure she's okay. Yeah, I'm glad she's yeah. safe. There's fucking no, Kenny and the Wizard the breaking the chambers the streets. of your mom. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's gonna do it. Yeah, she's had worse. <laughs> <laughs> what did he find? Until he found a small corner room with a peculiar collection of jars containing what could only be described as half-eaten dinkles. <gasps> they were organized with an unsettling amount of care and seemed to be hooked up to a system of tubes. It was difficult to make out the details from the blurry portal picture. This is it, Franky. This is where he's been staying. Franky hurried over and, exclaimed, and examined the room for himself. Oh, boys, it looks like this bad boy's saving the optics for last, that kinky salami breadstick. By the way, <laughs> kinky, kinky salami, salami breadstick. breadstick. <laughs> wow. It's so hard to read this shit, dude. No, Franklin's into it. You're yeah, Franklin. Franklin. By the way, I, I thought I the drama swallowed, swallowed people's dinkles whole. <laughs> <laughs> and the description says he was way too short to be able to reach those jibba jaws. It's a team. <laughs> <gasps> it's worse than we thought. The crown doesn't even know what they don't know, Franky. On the stone shelf next to the small sleeping mat was a bag of some sort of glowing green mineral. Falumbo zoomed in on the bag and his eyes lit up with delight. <laughs> zoomed in? Yeah, zoomed It's a people. It's like an iPhone. Oh, it's like, <laughs> just like, but he's pinched with two fingers, pinch and zoom. Exactly. Enhance. This is in the future. That's how Enhance. Mm -hmm. That's it. Looks like old Dinkle has been smoking some wizard crack. And this ain't no crumbly crap from the street corner. This shit is top notch. Best quality, only one wizard dealer in the city can make shit like that. Happens to be my homie, Sydney Smokestoner. Sydney. Let's go and see him, Volumbo said. But wait, bossy boy. <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't we head over to the crib as sweaty as possible and wait for him? <laughs> we could do that, Frankie, except I'm running low on pot and crystal, and you know how I get after two hours without medicine. <laughs> oh yeah, I do. You start pissing yourself everywhere and screaming, and how your ears are full of moldy cheese, and then you start taking off my clothes. Franky enough. <laughs> <laughs> now that was an isolated incident, one-time thing and all, but you understand the point I'm trying to make. Let's get going. Also, where did you get those earrings? Those things are fucking nice. <laughs> Sid's place is on the way. We'll swing by, do some drugs with Sid, maybe learn some information, and we can check on old Dinkle's crib whenever we want with the portal. The pair walked over to Sid's with haste. Falumbo's wizard dealer, Sid Smokestoner, had been kicked out of magic school a number of years earlier for, quote, convincing the dean to snort so much molly and smoke so much crack that he butt-raped the school mascot, burnt <laughs> down the dining hall with magical fire, and ate 150 replaceable magical scrolls, and then died. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it. That'll do it. That'll um, kill a guy, sounds yeah. Sounds like he deserved your friends. Sounds like he went yeah. down in a blaze of glory, though. <laughs> Amazing. Magical blaze. Yeah, that too. Yeah. Yeah. Blaze up. They knocked on the door and were greeted by a squinty-eyed wizard who was chillaxing mad. Yo, look who it is, the bamfiest motherfucker on the south side. How's it hanging, Detective Fam? Oh my god. Sid, I love him. Sid was a slender, blonde wizard who pretty much looked exactly like Owen Wilson, <laughs> with a short, bland, a short, blonde, scraggly, hipster beard and a pointy hat. Wow. <laughs> nice. Wow. You know how it is, just trying to get really fucked up and solve a mystery, Falumbo replied. Well, come on in, fellas. I'm assuming that this is the new assistant Franklin you've been telling me so much about. Damn, dude, your blink game's on fire. Yeah! Oh, thank you! You are a bouncy boy, aren't you? I'm a bouncy boy. I do want a biscuit. <laughs> Sid took the pair through his massive medieval apartment that was filled with all kinds of grow-ups and strange magical drug paraphernalia. There was a pond of magical aquatic half puppy half kittens whose saliva could be refined into opium. Oh shit. <laughs> there was also a cross. Is that new? Huh? Is that new? What do you mean? Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. That's canon. Yeah. It's canon. <laughs> there was also a cross dressing griffin that shot out dank crystal meth. <laughs> Damn <laughs> dogs. Two oh god. Two ocean pixies were jerking off a merman in a giant tank and pouring his fishy jizz into rubber top vials. <laughs> the way, listen, listen. The ways in which most wizard drugs were made was not advertised commonly, and nor should it have been. <laughs> right. 
It's like Futurama with the slurm, <laughs> where it's just a fucking a worm that just ejaculates into the Coke can. the Fortune can. Cookie episode. Yeah, the Fortune <laughs> Cookie episode of Rick and Morty. In the movie, though, the, the mermaid in the bat is black. Yeah, but... Right, yeah. The <laughs> 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 Only now. Only in the Disney reboot, yeah. Yeah, can't wait for that. It's coming out soon. Well, all right. He's coming soon. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> he's coming all the time. Literally all the like, time. Literally, yeah. That's his job. Oh, constantly. Incredible. Sid brought them downstairs to a magically lit beanbag chill zone where they all sat down <laughs> and passed a newly packed wizard bong to Falumbo. So, man, what do you need? Falumbo accepted greens, took a monster hit, then casually ate a quarter ounce of magical elven mushrooms that were grown on the taints of unicorns. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you could maybe let me know who you sold your wizard crack to in the past few weeks. You see, there's this guy I'm chasing, he's a real nasty fucker, and I know for a fact that he brought some wizard crack, he bought some top shelf wizard crack from you, asked Falumbo. Oh, you mean that new shit I've been selling? Falumbo, my man, you know, I don't like to dissolve customer information, man. It's just bad business, but maybe I could make an exception if you and your sexy skinny jean associate here agree <laughs> to, you know, join me on a little side quest. Oh, you no. see, the Orc Mafia has recently gotten into the dealing business, and they've quickly become my number one competition. Their biggest lab is located on an island in the bay, 20 minutes from the city walls. We'd only need to kill like a dozen low-life orcs to send a message. Oh, and they're criminals too, so you know you can't get in trouble or nothing. Is that how that works? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm, I don't know, you big bundle of bisquick, you. The detective and I have a very tight as fun schedule we need to stick to, said Franklin. Sid replied quickly, Isn't there any way you could just do me a solid? I'll totally give you all my customers. Flumbo sat there pondering. I'll throw in some free weed. And that was that. <laughs> <laughs> the trio quickly returned to the underground lair to get suited up to take on the orc mob. Franklin wore skin-tight steel skinny jeans, a white leather cardigan covered by many icy necklaces, and a designer oak longbow. This fellow was closing in on too much sauce. <laughs> <laughs> the drug dealer slash forest spirit wizard, Sid, wore his usual battle robes and grabbed a lightning sword to back up his lightning staff. Oh, oh. shit, yeah, now you match, of course. Yeah, standing pack and heat. Falumbo <laughs> spent most of the time throwing up in the toilet from the shroomies he had eaten back at Sid's, <laughs> but eventually managed to get on most of his clothes and grab a weapon or two before most stumbling out the doors. Bronco <laughs> doesn't need all of his clothes. Yeah, his, his pants, underwear, shirt are all missing. He's got a hat on. <laughs> <laughs> Sid opened a portal to the beach next to the Mafia's secret lab, which looked suspiciously like a normal coastal village inn with a karaoke bar. Mm. Yo, Sid, are you sure this is the right place? That doesn't even look like a secret drug lab, asked Frankie. That's why you never seen it, dog. They're hiding in plain sight, replied Sid. <laughs> Hmm, you also said there would be maybe a dozen orcs, but it looks like more like, hmm, 25, you know? <laughs> and they don't look like monsters. Some of them look like Saucy Sally or glasses, yeah? I don't think, I don't think the odds on this one are very good, sassy little boy. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, guys, I'm telling you, they're cooking up fat in the back room, and all those motherfuckers in there are trying to make you think. They're just a normal orc in on an island. Now shut the fuck up. I'll show you who really owns the Southside Market. Sid started. Sid stated plainly as he popped a Xanax. <laughs> Franklin continued. I don't know. I've never seen you fight the Nazi man. And the detective is so fucked up. He's over there eating sand and licking his notebook. Palumbo <laughs> is eating sand right now. <laughs> Little did they know, Palumbo was actually gaining some valuable recon. It's <laughs> working. <laughs> Twelve men is one thing, but hold up a sec there, you sexy European fuck. <laughs> you questioning my skills, bitch? Don't you know? Don't you worry, player. I got hell of forest smarts, apprehended from ancient magical tree spirits during an eight-day-long acid trip, one day per spirit. I got deadly <laughs> wizard spells shooting out of my hassle, bro. <laughs> I've learned how to live for extended periods of time with minimal nuts, resources, and sustenance. Give me four foot long Subway sandwiches, bitch, I can last eight days. <laughs> <laughs> what, the, what the fuck are you guys bickering about, Flumbo cut in after snorting a few lines of coke? Okay, so now he's like even down. <laughs> I don't know, man. Franky here's hesitant about whether or not we can take these fuckers. Yeah, whatever. Shut the fuck up, pussies. Who gives a shit? Let's kill some fuckers. Let's go. Flumbo charged up the beach. 
straight towards the inn, not entirely sure what the fuck was happening, but right as he got to the door, he realized that he had foolishly left behind his two enchanted cutlasses on the beach. Before he could react, the door opened, and two enormous orc bouncers stood, arms folded, glaring down at Falumbo's sweaty, nervous, totally tripping balls-ass face. And what the fuck is a shady Jew-dwarf fella like you doing in a nice town tonight? That was the worst. Half <laughs> <laughs> it's just a fact. It's not racist if it's a fact. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, just being clear. Yeah, yeah. This entire movie is being directed by Spielberg. Right? Yeah. Okay, so we're good. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Let's go with that. Falumbo looked around behind him for his companions, but they were nowhere to be seen. Luckily for him, he had spent many years building a resilient tolerance to any and all controlled substances and had the uncommon ability to cut through any wave of inebriation from any drug through the use of extreme strength and focus for a short period of time. Um, uh, I was just, uh, wondering if this was a good place to get fucked up. And maybe, uh, I could take a turn on the karaoke mic. I've got mad rap skills. Oh, shit. Well, I'm most oh, 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 oh. As soon as he said it, he froze, as he realized his, his suddenly sober self had made a critical error. For he definitely did not have serious rap skills. Oh, yeah. <laughs> figure it out. He prayed that the possibility would come that he wouldn't have to rap. His prayers would go unanswered. Oh no. <laughs> the two bands of bouncers gave each other a disapproving look, nodded, then turned back towards the detective. Come with us. <laughs> the orcs grabbed Falumbo, threw a bag over his head, and dragged him into a into to the back of a tavern room, set him on a chair. Falumbo was trying not to panic as a strong hand tore the bag from his head. His eyes adjusted to the colorful, bright, magical lights that were shining directly on him. As he gathered his sight, he realized that he was on a stage looking at a crowd of eager orc tavern goers. A voice boomed over the loudspeakers. This here rough looking motherfucker claims he got mad Mike skills! Oh, <laughs> so let's no. give him a round of applause! <laughs> let's go, Frankie! <laughs> Palumbo, Frankie's... Franky's back Franky with definitely has bars too. Franky's got sure bars. I should do that ne next time. Oh yeah! <laughs> oh, you bouncy boy! The crowd cheered and beckoned Falumbo to rap. Detective Falumbo made an important decision right then and there on that stage in an unknown, possibly mafia-owned orc tavern. He decided to let the beat flow through him, in turn releasing all the drugs that he had been holding back into command. An orc handed Falumbo a mic, and a dope beat started playing. Lumbo was so fucking high, like, oh my god, what is, is this a lightsaber? What, you, what am I even supposed to know what that is? Shit! Wait a sec, am I, am I supposed to be rapping right now? He was not entirely sure where he was, or why he had come to an orc tavern in the middle of the woods. But hey, when the beat beckons, ain't nothing to do but spit some fire freestyle. <laughs> I actually uh, just got a text. We just confirmed Eminem to play for Lumbo. <laughs> oh, hell yeah! Really? Oh, really? Yeah. Is he Jewish? Uh, well, <laughs> half Jewish, yeah. I mean, it, no one knows. <laughs> it's hard to tell with white dudes. It, it is, is, it is, yeah. <laughs> Especially because he keeps his hair short, you know? Could be anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Alright, can I get a beat? Uh, do you want it off the speaker? No, no, just give it to me. Y'all don't know me, but that's all right. I'm a tiny motherfucker from the city south side. I'm not here to preach. You see, your give a can fake. I'm here to swallow and breathe. All my lungs and liver can take. So like that shit up back, cause I'm permanently plastered. Forever faded in fact, smoking green like a master. No need to get deep or call out the haters. Get those drugs into me so I can pound your ass later. I'm a simple guy with simple needs. I'm a crime-solving druggie who still follows his leads. If you fuck with me, your brain will constrict when I crush a tiny skull with my 10-pound dick. God damn, boy! <laughs> Falumbo did not expect the roaring applause he received from the crowd, for he was so fucked up, he had forgotten that he wasn't by himself. <laughs> The orcs lifted him and carried him to the nicest booth in the spacious tavern and started laying down doses of every party drug they could find. Everyone wanted to take a hit with the master, and Falumbo was somehow keeping his composure as he consumed a legendary amount of drugs. It was in this hazy cloud of immeasurable inebriation that he happened to remember that he still had two companions sitting outside who were probably trying to kill all these dudes that Falumbo had only recently discovered were cool as fuck. Yeah, they were, though. 
Hold up a sec, guys. Flambo shouted out, his mind somewhere in limbo. I gotta go outside and take a piss. His legs were not entirely cooperating, so he utilized his subconscious to operate a significant percentage of his motor controls and guide his body to the front door and stumbled out the door and began shouting into the night, Guys! Guys, it's totally fine. I've got great news. We were totally wrong about these dudes. They fucking crazy. Like, crazy in a cool way. Like, change of plans. We're getting fucked up here tonight with Florkoth and Flocklock. And I'll solve the case in the morning. Guys, he peered through the darkness, but there was no response. Falumbo shrugged and marched back into the tavern looking for more drugs. Hey, you guys aren't like part of the Orc Mafia, are you? Falumbo prodded. The crowd became silent. And why, why would you think something like that? demanded Blorgoth. Oh, I don't know. I just remembered like one of my friends earlier was like, Yo, we gotta take out this Orc Mafia met lab or some shit. And I was like... <laughs> <laughs> Just laying it all out, huh? I was like, yeah, okay, sure, sounds good. And now I'm like hanging out here with you guys and smoking and everything is cool. And like, I can't really see very well, but uh, you guys seem so cool to me. Am I, <laughs> all I just now. love you guys so much. Am I like, am I tripping or is this like a secret mafia drug lab party or something? <laughs> Friend, in all honesty, we're not just part of the Orc Mafia. We are the leaders of the four clans. Come together for our seasonal bang bang beach party slash karaoke nights. <laughs> Let me tell you one more time. Yeah, yeah. I said it wrong. We are the leaders of the four Orc clans. Come together for our seasonal bang bang beach party slash killer karaoke nights. <laughs> you see, in our culture, the leaders of each clan are elected not just to lead the people, but also to run the business, which is primarily you know, selling drugs and getting all the cash, cash, money, gang, gang. Now, <laughs> gang, gang. That's not the kind of information that any random stranger, even one as legendary as yourself, just comes across. Applied Blorgoth. Oh shit, really? Damn, you're motherfucking royalty? Wow, that's crazy. All this time, I never knew. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that's crazy. <laughs> we have been forced to be cautious recently in our meetings. You see, there is a creature who has been targeting our race and part of my verbiage gobbling up our dinkles. The reason for these attacks are unknown, but we know the more hung your dinkle, the more likely your dinkle is to be fastly and ferociously removed. You all responded. Oh shit, no fucking way. You guys would never guess why the fuck I'm here. You see, crazy thing, I'm a detective. The orcs shuffled defensively. No, 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 not like a, you know, phony Capital Castle BSPD bonehead. I'm private eye. Yeah. Only work for money, not ethics. No need to worry about me. <laughs> Coincidentally, the Dinkle Goblet happens to be the exact guy that I'm after. Flumbo was cut off as the orcs shrieked in terror at something behind Flumbo. <gasps> oh shit, Sid, I was wondering where you were. Franky, why are you rocking around behind that palm tree like that? Franky was curled up in the fetal position, grabbing his crotch. While Flumbo could see oh, no. it was covered in blood. <gasps> oh no! no. no. Not his gobbler, did no. <laughs> He looked up at Falumbo with a hopeless expression of, on his beautifully contoured face. <sighs> Bossy boy, look what he did! No, no. No. His beautiful dinkle. Franklin gestured towards his genitals to reveal the gruesome torn appendage that was now Franky's little dinkling. Oh. Dinkling? No. I did not expect that in a million years. Oh. I see him, but I forgot. Your wizard homie is apparently not a naughty boy! Oh! The dinkle gobbler can gobble your dinkle at You're what? Time. Sit. Sit. What's going on here? Does this mean that you're the fucking Dinkle Gobbler? Did no. you seriously gobble oh. Franklin's Dinkle? I can't believe you did that. Falumbo screamed in disbelief. Falaklak the orc bouncer butted in. Wait, is that the guy who sews people's dicks into their shoes? No, 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 that's the Dinkle Cobbler. <laughs> <laughs> totally. There it is. Guy makes shoes with dicks, totally different thing. This is the Dinkle Gobbler, the guy who, who gobbles dicks, totally different, and actually, no, I didn't gobble Franklin's dick, he just tried to make a move on me, he's gay, I guess, and I accidentally blew his dick off with a cock explosion spell. Oh. <laughs> accidentally! Well, but I, I guess it would be fair to say I am the Dinkle Gobbler, even though I'm telling you it's not what you think, declared Sid. Dude, but why? Like, is it a weird sex thing? Like, I'm sorry. I might, it might be because I'm like so fucking high right now, but like, this is not making sense. <laughs> There's a much more logical reason to why I collect penises. Mostly orc penises, than petty sexual pleasure. The legend of the Dinkle Gobbler was started two years ago by a few dickless orc survivors. Uh, after me and some wizard dealer buddies were practicing an ancient ritual drug recipe we had been taught by the tree spirits. You see, wizard crack, 
that I had before this recipe was not selling very well. I was getting less than acceptable reviews. And we learned from the spirits that people's dicks, uh, orc dicks, could be distilled and refined into a superior strand of wizard crack. So, me and, oh. me and these other wizard dealers been secretly going around collecting dicks from time to time and people totally blew it out of proportion and were like, yo, there's this monster named the Dick God where he's eating people's dicks. <laughs> we're just taking them. No one's getting hurt. Except for, Except for the guy who's hot. <laughs> they all hey. lost their dick and frog. So you're saying this past couple years I've been smoking exclusively literally orc penis and that you've been going around biting off dudes' penises and selling them as drugs. As <laughs> well, you should, you well dude, should I don't bite them off myself. What? This is why you should never find out where your drugs are. Exactly. Yeah, you don't fuck around if you don't want to find out. Well, I don't bite them off myself. I have my dogs do it. Sid slammed the base of his staff oh against the cobblestone street and two giant lightning wolves appeared on either side. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His staff was glowing with an electrical field of blue energy that he harnessed for power. The beefiest and toughest orcs from the orc rabble amassed into a battle formation alongside Flobo. Detective, we got your back. We may not be magical, but we are the orc mafia. We have some tricks up our sleeves, assured Blorgoth. Sid smiled as he looked across the town square at the formidable battle force opposing him. One more thing. Those wizard buddies I was telling you about, the other ones who know the recipe, I called them in as backup just in case you guys pussied out. Three more faded, pointy-hatted wizards emerged from the ocean, each with a different pair of wolves in tow. There was Cough Cough Wheezy, the fire wizard, <laughs> Twa Pocket Snot Rocket, the skilled corrosive wizard, and lastly, the frost wizard, Shia the Dick Shiver. <laughs> All backing up Sid and his lightning hounds, poor Franky passed out from crotchular blood loss, and his cat <laughs> took a piss on his head. No, what? It's written down. You that. I have to read the you words. Oh man. Wow, Frank got done dirty. Well oh, said, yeah. shouted Falumbo. I'm high as shit, and I can't think of anything cool to say. So it's time to tango, Mango. <laughs> <laughs> Palumbo slipped on his spiked knuckles, brass knuckles, and held up three shuriken-like spy projectiles. He charged forward with the orcs running beside him as the eight magical wolves of a different elements raced towards them colliding in the middle of the square, and shit was going crazy. Orcs dinkles were getting gobbled up all over the place. <laughs> Columbo threw two of his shurikens into each of the firewolves' eyes. The firewolves, because they all have different elements. Yeah, I got it. You fucking <laughs> catching up? You with me? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They dissolved into puddles of black ash. Oh, the God. wizard shot various magical missiles into the crowd, targeting the crotchular areas of the twenty or so orcs. Falaklock drew a long spiked flaming javelin and buried it into the throat of the frost wizard Shia the Dick Shiver, and his two ice wolves immediately evaporated the air. Mm. The orc mobsters were falling left and right, but it was clear they were getting the upper hand against the wizards. Falumbo pulled the lightning wolf off of Blorgoth's dick moments before a gruesome gobbling. He stuck, <laughs> he stuck his last shuriken up the wolf's asshole, and which caused it to start vomiting uh, lightning bolts out of its mouth. So Falumbo used the lightning wolf vomit gun to shoot down every last one of the wolves that was left. <laughs> with lightning... <laughs> Lightning yeah, using puke. tools that are in front of you. Lightning yeah. puke before his wolf gun croaked from anal trauma. That's when his runs out of ammo. Mm. As Sid turned towards the three remaining wizards, he found they had all stopped firing missiles and joined powers to cast a multicolored magical force field around them. There were only six orcs left remaining. Yeah. You fought well, detectives and orc mobsters. You came close to defeating us, and closer than we'll ever admit. But we have one final ritual spell. It is plainly unstoppable, Sid declared. Prepare to meet your doom as we summon the most powerful tree monster you have ever seen. The wizards circled up and began muttering an ancient ritual spell. They each took three tabs of acid, a vital step in the ritual process, and started making Natural. some crazy, unintelligible yelping sounds. <laughs> Oh, fungus mongus. Fungus mongus. <laughs> <laughs> a blinding green light began to emanate from within the wizard's circle. Falumbo covered his eyes as the light grew in size and power. 
A rumbling sonic boon erupted across the island, and a concussive shockwave of magical force blew past Flumbo and shattered every single window in the village. The wizard stood, arms folded, smiling at the enormous fierce tree monster they had just summoned, standing before them. Nice knowing you, detective, said Glodin, but Fl Flumbo was a little puzzled as he regained his senses from the blast, for he saw no tree monster standing before him. Only the three wizards standing under a regular old palm tree. He looked over at Blorgoth and Flocklock, who were both confused. Flocklock shrugged, equally puzzled. Oh. oh, I think I get it, Flumbo stated. These fuckers, they're just tripping, dude. I don't even, I don't think they know any forest spirits. <laughs> <laughs> they just do a lot of acid. I bet you Orctics don't even really make better crack. <laughs> These fuckers just went down some weird tangent on one of their acid trips. <laughs> the three wizards looked at each other with devious delight. They had expected the detective would underestimate their acid powers. Now, attack, Bongo, Tree Lord! Flumbo paced up cautiously to all three of the wizards in formation, walking right past the giant Tree Lord monster that was just a normal palm tree. <laughs> and he kicked the fire wizard in the dick, snapped his neck, then pummeled his brass knuckles into the other corrosive wizard until his face looked like SpaghettiOs. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh, spaghetti -o. It can't be, cried Sid. All this time I've been living a lie. Gobbling off dinkles for nothing. No. It appears so, old buddy. I guess that just goes to show you can never count on drugs. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we're like. It's, kind of it's like not drugs. quite over. It's drugs not quite over. Like people who are on drugs. We're so close. I'm sorry. I know it's right. so long. Okay. Sid laid down his sword and staff, succumbed to his inevitable defeat. The detective handcuffed him and strapped him to the back of a dinghy boat that the orc mobsters gave to him. He paced over to Franklin's limp, styling ass body. <laughs> Franky. He turned him on his back and checked his pulse. Franklin's eyes shot open and Thanks. frantically darted around trying to locate his bossy boy. <laughs> Mossy boy! Mossy boy, I can't see! I'm blind! Franklin shouted in hopeless European tone. Shh, Franklin, it's all over now. We got our guy. Unfortunately, it looks like your Johnson is in an irreversible state of disrepair, and that has somehow caused you to go blind. <laughs> oh, <my laughs> I'm thinking as much, you saucy man. I do not wish to go on living in a world with no eyes to see, no dinkle to penetrate. <laughs> Leave me here, my feisty friend. You go show those phonies on Royal Capital Castle that what a real man is, and get that blowjay from the princess in front of all of them. I will, Franky. Rest easy. Tears poured down Flumbo's blood-stained cheeks as he closed Franklin's eyelids. No. Franklin Buffbottom did not end up dying that day, and he eventually became a very useful and very fun addition to the Orc Mafia. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God, I was about to just No, cry. so he's, about he's blind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we couldn't hear about his lost. cock, and he's just like... His cock he... came out, and he went blind because of it. Yeah. Wow. Honestly. Do so I would fucking... Blind we're so close to being so over. Much, okay. As he got on the dinghy boat to leave, he looked back thoughtfully at the bloody crowd of Orc Mobsters in their highly damaged village. Obviously, this party was ruined by him showing up, but what can you do? <laughs> right, right. Well, my friends, it's been real. It looks like a huge section of the drug market just opened up for you all to profit from. I wish you luck. If you ever find yourself on the south side, pay me a visit at my office and we can get shit-faced, Falumbo said in a sorrowful tone. Will do, detective. Thanks again for all that you did for us tonight. You know, <laughs> from stopping a group of four delusional wizards and their eight wolves, elemental wolves, from taking all of our dicks and turning them into crack. <laughs> to, those, <laughs> uh, to, those, to those fire lines that you were spitting on the mic, you will be remembered, Falaklok reckoned. As Falumbo began paddling away back, pat, paddling his way across the bay to the city, he overheard an orc say, All right, fellas, let's cut off all these dead orc dicks and get cooking. Falumbo pretended he didn't hear that, <laughs> and he rode away on his boat, arriving in the city square in front of the capital castle at exactly 12 o'clock noon, right as the bounty booker was nailing the Dinkle Gobbler's bounty onto the board. No need, man, Flambo asserted. I got him right here. The city crown gasped and began an epic slow clap that culminated into a resounding hurrah.
will shower the detective in praise and lots of free weed, and the ceremony was held that evening in the palace, in the main hall where the detective Falumbo was awarded a stellar blowjob from the hottest princess in front of everyone, the entire city government, and all the right. king himself. Alright, alright. The king? Definitely, you heard <laughs> that, was that was the reward! That was the reward! That's the reward! That's right there on the post. That's a lot of pressure. It was most definitely, <laughs> most definitely top five, top five. The king additionally rewarded Falumbo with realm-wide recognition as the best detective around. The, the orc mobster showed up later with a fresh supply of wizard crack to liven up the party. Falumbo silently agreed not to reveal the ingredients in the crack. The New York Mafia eventually took over Sid's old crib and ran a realm-wide drug ring. Let's just say the reports of Dinkle Gobbler copycat cases became a weekly occurrence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> worse. Wow. Oh my god. I gotta god. say, I've had to pee for 30 minutes and I could not move. I, uh, <laughs> I'm in a similar boat. Riveting. Uh, riveting. I'm Let, the, let's pause real quick. Yeah. What do you think? Do you want to pause? Was, let's talk about it. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. I was straight up terrified. I thought Franco was dead. I, 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 I love, love doing that. If you have Oh, yeah. We heard some Holy fuck, we heard We heard some bad though, and I've heard this story like two or three times, and I still get terrified that he was dead. Dude, when he loses his dinkle, bro. Yeah, bro. Yeah. So, just right, so you know, if you remember the last episode, fucking Lil Peep, anyone? Yeah, yeah. yeah. dude, that, yeah. Like, I, we, we remember where he went at the end of the story? He almost died. I thought he died, he got swallowed by the cock monster or whatever. And then they went to Bongstone City. And then they went to Bongstone City. Think of the drugs we could buy there. Oh. You know who's there? Frock could fucking buff bottom running the orc mafia. At the, oh, they're in the same timeline? Oh, Motherfucking, you fucking it's right about that. Bro. It's all in Bongstone. Yeah, but he said in so the future of Bongstone. Imagine, Imagine a village, so. It's like yeah. a future, future. Dude, all of okay. our stories take place in the future, guys. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fine. Right, 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 right. Yeah. But imagine it's what America will become. riding in without a dick on Lil Peep. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, <laughs> such a good story. Lil Peep's comeback story might have been the greatest moment, but we'll say Franklin coming back from the dead. Honestly, Franklin inspired Lil Peep. Wow. Incredible. <laughs> Incredible. Okay, sorry it took so long. Thank you very no, much for listening. I'm gonna fucking pee myself. Okay, I'm gonna We're about to all piss. I'm We're gonna pause. Pause it. Yeah. My computer went off for like what? half a second, but Keaton got it. Oh. Ready? One. It's two. still recording, right? Yeah. Did you did it go off or no? no just so we can just leave it playing. It's it's like, it's so it's 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 story that's fine. fine. That's true. Let's pause it really quick. Anyway, come with you too. Ready? Set. Pause. From Connor's story is that. You don't want to know where your drugs come from. Right. Right. Because right. it's just as bad in, in real life. It might not be orc dicks, but... <laughs> Human like in, dicks? In Cabo, there's the shanty town of straight little garbage. And there's like 100 <laughs> people that live there, and it's just a, a pile of garbage that they live in. And they just <laughs> cut each other's dicks and off and they, turn it in. And that's the thing, <laughs> is they cut off tourists who get lost dick and right, turn right. it into the cocaine that you buy in Cabo. They cut it with gasoline. Well, I only buy mine in, in Denver, Colorado, so... Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a circle of life. It's all legal here, so it's good. It's all legal. Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Recreational cocaine. I've never used cocaine in my yeah. life, Mom. Uh, <laughs> my friend told me. Yeah. Yeah. That, no. uh, She's done acid. She's from. cool. Yeah. Yeah. She said she saw dead people the first time and told me never do acid. So, <laughs> that yeah, went well. We didn't listen for some reason. How much yeah. acid have you done since then? <laughs> like, at least three? Three acids. <laughs> All right. You're corn. That's a reasonable amount. Yeah. All right, I love we should do it. Like Jewel, should we get this thing going? I yeah. think that's uh, let's get another story. Let's get another play. story in there. Yeah. yeah. All right. Outro music. This is the uh, the follow up to my first ever fantasy fiction that I was on the last podcast with, the Heroes of Chlamydias. <laughs> yes. An age old tale. I'm indeed, so indeed. And uh, this is the Heroes of Chlamydias Part Two. <gasps> The Ocean Voyage. Oh shit. Let's go. Capital Crimes and shit. I I so, <laughs> uh, by the way, it's it's a capital crime to make or dicks into crap. Yeah. To gobble dicks, yeah. Punishable by death. Capital a crime. lot of people died in that, I think that's fair. Yeah, yeah. okay. But laws, so, are, laws are for nerds, so it doesn't matter. Right, right, right. right. I will say, as far as the prompt goes, this is a continuation of the last one, which the theme was uh, Serpent and Serpents and Towers. and Towers, which there are both in this, but there is also Islands and, yeah. and I guess you can find your own capital crimes. These are crimes <laughs> because they're probably being committed, and I guess we'll just have to see what happens. You can find your own. Choose find your, your own. Choose your own adventure. This is the choose your own capital crime kind of story. So. <laughs> choose your own capital crime. <laughs> now, when we last visited our heroes, the noble cocksheath constructor Fartima, the air mage of Bong Rips, Senior Keef. 
Lights. The Keeper of Fire <laughs> slash Drinker of Warm Bong Lights, Jimmy Heaters. The yeah! Fire yeah. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy Heaters. Fucking Heaters. Sue Date, the Suck Down Samurai. <laughs> <laughs> and his harem of STDs and dildo daggers. <laughs> and of course, Kevin. Kevin's Kevin. fucking coming? Kevin the cousin. God damn it, Kevin. He's, he's okay. He's fine. Yeah, yeah, he's the fine. The last time we visited all of our faded heroes, they had just left their favorite watering hole, the watering hole, <laughs> <laughs> with a simple quest from a mysterious woman. Sail across the sea of the Gozai gods, which no one had ever returned from. Do something that she did not explain, and then come back with a prize that she also did not explain. <laughs> Sounds like a legit mission to me. So, let's be honest, at this point, they're just shooting in the dark. Just like Oedipus shot in his mom. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, okay that's like... the last Oedipus joke of the show. I'm <laughs> sorry. Well, if you don't remember, that was the main theme of, uh, yes, of the first one. Also, we don't have to get into the details, but I see some Columbus in that as well. <laughs> no, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Upon returning from the watering hole to his humble cock shack, Fortima slept restlessly, tossing and turning all night as fever dreams permeated his mind. He dreamt of great serpents, great towers, and of course, great tits. Yeah. When he woke in a suspiciously sticky pool of sweat, he could barely remember this terrifying dream sequence, but all he knew was a name and a mission. He must save Helga von Winkletramp. Owner of the aforementioned great tits, <laughs> and bring her back to Chlamydias. Fortimo rallied himself and began his preparation. He packed a simple bag of food, tools, and of course, at least a dozen of his finest horse cock sheaths. Trust me, they'll be important later. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. When he, when he felt satisfied that he could survive the unsurvivable sea with only the lust in his heart and contents of his sack, he left to find his sacks in this grand endeavor. Oh, he's got multiple. Oh, okay, good, good, good. <laughs> cock sheath sack, actual cock sheath sack. Actual sack. sack. <laughs> First, he stopped by Jimmy Heater's cave home and made sure he was ready to fuck some shit up with his fireballs. Devilishly good looks and Chicago charm, wherever the fuck that is. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy was more than prepared with a case of fire potions that had mysteriously disappeared from the Mage College and a pack of 69 Slim Jims purchased from the local Amazon slave market. <laughs> <laughs> With free overnight delivery. Oh, there you go, there you go. <laughs> for members only, not applicable in all areas of Bongstone, see your local market auctioneer for terms and services. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the two took their gear and worked their way towards Sudate's house, or as he dubbed it, the Fuck Bucket. The Fuck Bucket. <laughs> About a half mile away, they smelled this bucket of fuck, like the sweet rot of a fruit you bought to start the healthy diet, but then left on a countertop for two months as it stares into your failure of a soul. Oh, <laughs> damn. The sweetness was almost intoxicating, but as Sudate said, you can catch flies with honey, but you catch more honeys being fly. Or some other dumb shit you hear from your friends who tries too hard to get laid. <laughs> Sudate was in the middle of a four-girl, one-cow orgy, don't ask. What? <laughs> Four girls or one girl? Or one girl. Or orgy cow. is an orgy. No yeah. questions asked. <laughs> orgy is orgy, don't ask. And had to be roused from his post-nut slumber to get ready for the journey. He quickly packed his bag of four long swords, six daggers, one set of knuckle dusters, two bars of soap, one pillowcase, five bags of bongstone jerky, seven dildos of varying shapes and sizes, which he claimed were absolutely critical for battle and definitely not for sticking in his butt. <laughs> <laughs> This is like the second guy out of three that just has like a stash of dildos like in a satchel, like a they separate bag. Absolutely critical. Absolutely critical, yes, I, I, I take your word for it. His prize dildo, the four foot purple dildo sword club. Four foot <laughs> sword oh. club. Like some fucking Saints Row ass shit. Exactly, beam exactly like Saints Row. <laughs> we'll see that again later. The growing party ventured to Senor Keefe's house, which was more like five rainbow-colored tapestries sewn together with hemp rope, <laughs> and smelled like Woodstock if Woodstock had been held in a field of burning marijuana. <laughs> Is that what it was? Yeah, that's, that's an honest word. <laughs> they found Senor Keefe listening to this new age bongstone jam band that was like totally dope if you just give them a chance. It really sounded like a bunch of earless orphans banging on pots they found in a dumpster. <laughs> so yeah, not great. Anyway, 
<laughs> Senior Keith whipped a quick gust of wind to pack his magic Old English bong, which old was just English. an old 40 with a hole in the lid for the pipe piece. <laughs> <laughs> I'll change I'll drink to that. So relevant. <laughs> I told you, I added it. Yeah. His 10 pound sack of definitely not drugs and, okay. <laughs> and he right. departed for the docks. But where are his drugs? Definitely not in the bag. They're <laughs> <laughs> in his other ball sack. Yeah, it's in his ball sack. They're in the other sack. They're in his ball sack, right. Okay. <laughs> this is the only reason you have more than one sack. Yeah. <laughs> one for drugs, one for dildos. One, one for, for your horse cock sheets. But those gels are vital to combat. And one for your, your testicles, of definitely course. Definitely also not for sticking in your butt. Yeah. Right, right. Exactly. Definitely not drugs. Uh, as they approached the smattering of white-sailed ships in search of a boat they could charter, a voice called out from behind. Hey! You guys forgot to get me, but it's cool, I made it! No! Oh, oh goddammit, Kevin's here, so I don't know why! You have a sense of that, right? <laughs> why is he always fucking showing up? Yeah. It's a fringe guy, it's fringe activities. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin ran up, and in classic, sort of helpful, but mostly trying to impress people to make friends fashion, mentioned his three-mast frigate that he had invited everyone to cruise on for some day drinks, but no one cared enough to go or remember that it existed. Oh no. <laughs> well, that sure is convenient to the plot, said Fartimo. <laughs> And they embarked on a fully staffed and orgy-equipped warship. Orgy-equipped, <laughs> alright, now we're headed out. Anyway, it was So for Kevin drinks. owns the ship? Dude, he's the sleeper fringe guy who has a lot of money. Yeah. That's why he always brings at least a six. So there is a reason he's around. Well. <laughs> yeah, because it's important to the plot. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No yeah. one remembered he had the boat, so obviously he wasn't using it. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I, for one, am glad he has a boat. Yeah. Oh, I want to see what happens. It was very convenient for the plot for him to have a boat, so it was very nice <laughs> that he had that. Yeah, I mean, exactly. <laughs> Imagine if it was just like, but nobody had a boat, Finn. <laughs> Nobody had a boat today, went back so, home. Yeah, I, for one, say thank fucking God for Kevin. That's You're what right. I'm saying. Like, I could do a whole page about them chartering a boat, or Kevin has a boat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we can hang out with him for like an hour. Yeah, yeah it, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, he's He'd good. probably stay for like an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> I think I gotta get up early for work tomorrow. Like, hey, Kevin, do you mean just you like, go home. Like, hey, Kevin, do you mean to like, call you an Uber or something? <laughs> oh, oh, guys, I'm good. I'm chilling. Yeah, yeah, let's do this. No, you'll just call Sorry for writing Kevin for you. Continue. Open that sack up. Let's see what's oh, in there. Are, everything about Kevin is canon. <laughs> It's not our Kevin, though. We we know we all have a no, Kevin. And just just like before, just Kevin. like Kevin would have liked, we're still fucking talking about him. Yeah. <laughs> I wrote this before I met Kevin, so it doesn't count. Setting sail. <laughs> Setting sail into the Gozai Sea was a daunting task for even the saltiest of sailors. And these men had spent a grand total of like three days on a boat. The first day of seafaring was mostly spent puking more than a white dude in a Mexican street market and staring longingly into the void for the sweet release of a merciful death. After slightly getting their sea legs, our group of mighty ish heroes set their sights to the task at hand. Senior Keith pulled out a crude map drawn on a rolling paper and pointed out their ideal <laughs> route towards what they believed was the destination that Fartima had seen in his pipe dreams. Around the island, though, was drawn a sort of snake. Was this a warning? Was it a stain from when Senior Keith had it in his back pocket and farted and a little came out? <laughs> it was impossible to know. And all they knew is they must charge forward into the unknown. The first night of traveling, Fartima slept in his hammock below deck because that's what sailors do, and once again was visited by the dreams of times to come. A booming voice filled his mind. Fartima, it is I, Gozai, king of the gods. Oh, oh shit. Oh, oh shit, dreamt Fartima. <laughs> the king <laughs> of the <In> gods. <laughs> you have been given a great quest, but be warned. The path ahead is full of danger, and these be rough seas. He continued his warning. Trust only those that are worthy, and bring peace to this realm once again. <laughs> As the Gozai's voice began to fade, one should imagine like floating on a boat up towards a waterfall on Pirates of the Caribbean at Disneyland. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Fuck, Kevin has no <laughs> value. <laughs> I said trust only those that are worthy. There's a hidden message there somewhere. All right, all right, sorry. All right, all right. Going back to the as, message. As the Gozai's voice began to fade, one name echoed. 
Kevin. Space Garbage Island. <laughs> Space Garbage Island. Space Garbage Island. Put some reverb on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Noted. Fartima woke with a gasp and saw Kevin standing over him muttering what was either a spell or a super weird erotic fantasy. <laughs> As he jumped up, Kevin guiltily exclaimed, Oh, so sorry, bro, I was just counting your chest hairs? Oh, what? what? An excuse so weird that Fartima wished he had been born without ears, like those orphans <laughs> who played the pot drums. <laughs> <laughs> He brushed off the awkwardness of this adventure stowaway and began to gather the boys for a dream debrief. He began explaining the message from the great god of gods, but before he could get to any meaningful parts, an eerie sound filled the ship. A splash was heard from the top deck, then another, and another. The men rushed up the stairs and saw chaos. Sailors from stern to keel were screaming, covering their ears, or just lying on the ground, curled into a little ball like little baby bitch boys. <laughs> <laughs> the eerie noise was... music? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a Drew! I'm sorry. That's Drew! That is the chief one! I thought it was an Airbnb people. No, 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 also, our window is completely open. This is echoing <laughs> out into the night. Wow. Yeah, but they're so acting gizzards. I guess the know. Chiefs are doing alright. Someone just got skull Oh, uh, I want to watch that game later. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, that was some great background commentary from our, our basement neighbor there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, okay. Yeah, right. Hey, give it one second. This man's got to hit the ground. Yeah, so I've, got the, the, I've got the basement neighbors pulled out my Kevin, to be old clear. English. <laughs> 42 yeah. ounce fucking Fuck gravity hit. <laughs> oh no, this is perfect. Senior O'Keefe over here is hitting the actual old English bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Which is perfect for what's on. Oh, 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 oh my god. That, he's like, hey, you want to hit this? I'm like, no, I think I'm good. Why? Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> this shit happens. One more, and I mean, that sounded so pleasurable. <laughs> no. Are you sure? It's a good time. I said Crocodile Chronic. I'll get you. Crocodile Chronic, sir. Straight from Florida, where the crocodiles live. <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. He's still going. Dude, I'm so glad that the story is finally getting part two and still no ending. Like, uh, I can't wait. I hope you know how much right. I'm loving it. Yeah. I'm, I'm loving it so much, I would really like for it to continue. Alright. Alright, you done over there? Yes. <laughs> oh my god. Here we go. Here's, Can here's we some, keep all here's, of this? Here's some, <laughs> here's some Adlin. As this music crested over the bow of the boat, all one could hear was Senior Keeve gurgling an old English bong on the side. <laughs> well yeah. fucking done. Nice. Cue rewind. Said, Shut the fuck up. We're listening to this weird noise. <laughs> <laughs> As the you guys power. planned this or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, exactly. It's an immersive experience. Two years in the working. <laughs> As the power of this sea magic washed over the group, they began to react. Jimmy Heaters, who had actually attended a school for magic, shortly, quickly <laughs> filled his ears with the nearest cloth and ran to the nearest sailor to help him. Senior Keith was so stoned that literally nothing could get to his brain, <laughs> so he wandered around laughing at funny pictures he thought he saw in the ship's wood beams. Kevin uselessly screamed and cowered in a corner, his fetal position luckily covering his ears from the noise. Let's go, Kevin. Fortima saw this all with horror as he felt his own mind begin to draw into the sweet sounds. But he too had heard stories of these dangerous musicians from the many nights he had fashioned cock sheets for. <laughs> his quick thinking allowed him to cover his ears in time, but not in time to save all of his friends. Sudate, the fabled suck down samurai and slayer no. of 1,000 wenches, quietly walked to the edge of the boat. There in the water floated the most beautiful woman he had ever seen a siren of Bongsterly Rock. No! <laughs> not not Bongsterly Bongster Rock, rock. dude. <laughs> not Sudate, the suck down samurai. Sudate had been with peasants, princesses, and definitely at least one pony. <laughs> <laughs> Like a centaur or <laughs> that cow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. These motherfuckers fuck animals. If you're a mammal, you are good to go. Yeah. Listen, he yeah. doesn't just suck down beers, okay? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. okay, okay. He had been with peasants, princesses, and definitely at least one pony, but never a fabled siren. Despite seeing sailors being dragged to their deaths beneath the black waves, 
he took one look back at Fartima and jumped. No. As he sailed into the water with the grace of an Olympic diver, the waves and arms of Murhos wrapped him warmly. Oh, no. No, it's how he wanted to go out. Fartima let out a cry, and one single tear rolled down his face for his lost friend. But there was no time for a second, for action had to be taken to save this voyage. Fuck. Fartima jumped up to the wheel of the ship and tried to steer it away from the siren-filled rocks. As he attempted to turn the wheel, Senior Keith moseyed up next to him and pointed out a really cool cloud to the northwest. <laughs> In a split second, Fartimo recognized the cloud as something that could only be a sign from the gods. The shape of a giant penis. Oh, perfect. <laughs> he immediately ignore turned hard oh, yeah. towards the symbol. Ignore that. Yeah. <laughs> turned hard towards the symbol as the sound of sweet music and screams of sailors farting and shitting themselves <laughs> faded behind him. Perfect. A few days of calm passed on the Gozai Seas as the battered crew made their way towards their estimated destination. Many stories were told along the route, most about women they had slept with and almost all made up. <laughs> <laughs> almost. No one, <laughs> no one could quite claim the mantle of bang like Sudate. R.I.P. Rest in pussy. He's literally <laughs> drowning in pussy. pussy. Yeah. yeah. I mean... It's the goes I see. It's the way to go. It's, it's the way to go. Live by the sword, die by the sword kind of guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It was, it was only a few more days until the island, so the crew had to take stock of their men in arms. While counting out the weapons they had on board, they came upon Sudate's bag of weapons. They went through, making sure everything was still in order. As a master of combat, his weapons would be the greatest help against whatever evil they would come to face. As they looked, they realized that his prize weapon was missing. A four-foot sword of death that had brought many foes and suitors to their knees. The sword was a purple dildo, with edges so sharp they could cut through the hearts of maidens and all of Bongstone. <laughs> and a clubbed head, uncircumcised of course, <laughs> so strong that it had once bashed a giant skull in one swing. <laughs> Shit. This weapon of mystery and sexual power must have gone down with the legendary Suck Down Samurai, and would be a great loss to the party in their future fight. So tragic. What are, gonna, what are they gonna do? Yeah, fuck, man. Well, the dildo. Not use the dildo sword, that's for sure. Have there been any capital crimes? Yeah. <laughs> the capital crime of fucking suicide, of course. I mean, <laughs> capitally <laughs> criminal horniness. <Okay. laughs> you so horny, you die. You pause, her, yeah. pause her for fucking there. Go to horny jail. Yeah. <laughs> I think suicide's technically illegal. Yeah. Yeah. Is it, yeah. Did you kill yourself? Do you get put to death? It's murder himself, so murder. <laughs> They're like, don't worry, we got him. <laughs> <laughs> we got him. That's when you just pull a like just like, yeah. agreeing to get Jesus on Kevin's boat. Christ. Agreeing to get on Kevin's boat, that's a real crime. Yeah. 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 There you go, there you go. We found it. We found it. Yeah. You well, deserve that. to die. Sunate, Sunate, yeah. Sunate, you deserve to die because you, well, you got on Kevin's know. fucking boat. You got on Kevin's boat. He should have known. He should have known. He should have known what he was getting into. You don't get on Kevin's boat and expect to live. <laughs> well, <laughs> sooner than expected, a small haze appeared on the horizon. It was a tiny island slowly materialized, a beautiful landscape of trees with long branches hanging down, leading up to a small set of hills capped by a large tower. As the ship slowly drew in to drop anchor, Fartima screamed. The branches? Snakes. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, no. The yes. trees? Also snakes. snakes. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> the hills? Oh. The hills? That's right. They were just hills. <laughs> Probably full of snakes! Oh god! <laughs> Can we go back to the last story of the snakes? Wait. Yeah, dude, flashback. The intro of the last story was Helga von Winkle Tramp her tower on the island full of snakes. Yeah. <laughs> way too many Rocks snakes. Rocks made of snakes. Yeah, way too many fucking snakes. snakes. That's way too many. There's a lot of snakes on this island. Yeah. Okay. It's Space Garbage Island full yeah, of full snakes. Full of snakes. <laughs> garbage snakes. As the crew looked down over the horrifying view, Jimmy Heaters screamed from the other side of the boat. Scared of snakes, didn't want to look. But what he saw scared him even more than an army of snakes. One big ass snake. Oh, 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 no. oh fuck. That's terrifying. They got like a million regular sized snakes and then just one big fucker. Someone has to rule the snakes. Well, Makes perfect sense. It's King Snake. It's King Dr. Snake. snake. Dr. Snake. <laughs> fuck. Snake King. A ripple began shaking the water around the ship as green and golden scales shimmered beneath the waves. The crew of the ship was silent until a single FUCK 
Where the end. <laughs> Senior O'Keefe had spilled a few mugs on the deck and was sprinting to the joint. It was super joint. I need mean, nuts all over the time. Try to laugh about a coffee. Just like Senior O'Keefe. You can't say the funny stuff when I have booze in my mouth. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, Alright. Shaking off their trance of fear, the crew leapt into action. Weapons bristled the edge of the ship as Shen Ron, the Great Serpent, crested the water. Fucking <laughs> Dragon Ball? <laughs> Shen Ron? This was named by my roommate. Here's you have gathered Dragon the Ball Dragon Balls, Ball. young Kevin. You may have one wish. <laughs> yeah, exactly. His massive head loomed over the ship's side as he flared his spear-sized fangs. After a booming hiss, the battle began. Surprisingly, Cousin Kevin jumped in first, oh, throwing well, a spear at Shen Ron. Let's go. It sailed through the air in 300 slow-mo style, pinging the shining sails on the side before just breaking and falling into the ocean. <laughs> oh <laughs> shit, said Kevin. Classic as Kevin. As Shen Ron lunged down onto him, swallowing him whole. Oh, fuck yes, yes. All the right, the Shen Ron's good guy confirmed. Kevin's out. Wait, Kevin's... Thank God. Let's go. Kevin has been swallowed. Thank God. Good fuck, everyone. Thanks for the ship. <laughs> the crew reeled as the ship shuddered from the weight as Shenron continued sliding off the edge and dove back into the water. Jimmy Heaters screamed again at the loss of his cousin, but, like, not that loud, because, meh. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy started chanting in some weird language that sounded like the crackling of coals and launched a fireball at the quickly disappearing tail of the snake. Turns out, snakes don't like fire, and the scorch tore through the scales of Shenron. The water foamed as the tail disappeared under the water again, and a few seconds of torturous silence fell over the shuddering boat. As suddenly as he had disappeared, Shenron slammed into the side of the boat again, launching sailors overboard and into the waiting death below. The wood cracked as the ship took more of a beating. Fartima held onto the railing for dear life. Jimmy Heaters flew through the air. Smacking into the mast and passing out faster than one of Bill Cosby's dates. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Senior Keith was floating in the air in a whirlwind of carefully controlled marijuana smoke, deflecting <laughs> debris from other around him. Far too much took in the destruction and didn't know what to do. It seemed like the end of times. With green scales flashing around him and explosions coming from the poop deck, the ship had a literal poop deck, it was just bathrooms and sewers. <laughs> Not great. Covered in splinters and the shit of 100 sailors, Fartima stood defiantly and looked at the snake. He let loose two throwing knives toward the eyes of the snake, who just closed his weird-ass snake eyelids. And like the horizontal, like yeah, a... Yeah, yeah, he just... Yeah. And, and made what sounded like a laugh. Fartima kept going, throwing spear, sword, and someone's dismembered arm at the snake. <laughs> Trying to find any weakness, nothing pierced the hard outer scales. Jimmy Heaters leapt into action behind him, throwing flame after flame, but Shenron had learned to avoid the fiery blasts and dodged the projectiles with surprising speed for such a large creature, like my dad dodging dishes being thrown by my mom. <laughs> True story. Anyway, <laughs> Fartima yelled at Senior O'Keefe for help, but he had sworn off any violence against animals after an especially emotional shroom trip with two cows and a crab person. <laughs> so, <laughs> two cows this time. <laughs> so, he, so he continued playing defense, trying to stop the shrapnel from stabbing any sailors in the face. Fartima thought this must be the end. With no hope of defeating this godly beast, water starting to slap higher and higher on the boat, all seemed lost. As Shenron slowly closed his grip around the ship, Fartima made peace with his life. His cock sheets had been his true passion, and he had lived an honorable one. His only regret was leading his friends far from their home to their deaths at the hands of an invisible, mon invincible monster. Just as Fartima closed his eyes to accept the cold darkness of death, a familiar sound pierced the chaos. A soft melody covered the air in milky sweetness. And even Shen Ron paused to see the source of this noise. Rising above the white crested waves was a beautiful face, then behind it, a salty smirk. <gasps> Sudate rose from the depths. Oh my oh, god. No yes. guy. Riding yeah. the hottest piece of fish ass you could ever imagine. <laughs> <laughs> he was 
butt ass naked except for the four foot dildo sword club he was bearing. <laughs> That's fucking right! And That's... a glowing golden cock sheath. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the horse cock sheath fit him like a glove. Oh. <clears throat> One hundred other blasts of water erupted as an army of seahorse sprang out of the blue, <laughs> flying at Shenron with all the fury of a scorned woman, or the giddiness of one who had had the best orgasms of their life over the last few days. Let's go. <laughs> Sudate screamed a battle cry and leapt from his horny steed straight at the eye of Shenron. As the beast attempted to scrape she-demons from his scales, he didn't see Sudate flying at him. The Dildor sword pierced his eye, and Sudate activated the deadliest and most secret of the sword's attachments. <laughs> A 15-foot geyser of an unknown white substance <laughs> erupted from the tip <laughs> and exploded into Shenron's head, bursting his eye and leaving the serpent screaming in pain. It's the Kamsa oh, Dildo shit. sword. <laughs> it's, it's a mystery what the liquid was. A, a total, it is a, it is the a total world story. will never know. It might be oat milk. You know? Cement, <laughs> perhaps? It could easily be oat milk. I, it'll be more clear in the movie, you'll see it. It's, yeah, it's you'll snake know. milk. Yeah, you'll be able to snake tell. milk, right, right. You'll right. be able to tell from the consistency. Yeah, yeah the, 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 the yeah. droopiness of it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Get our scientists on that. <laughs> We need, we need to reestablish the Mythbusters. Yeah, yeah. We'll figure it out. Yeah, exactly. No white colors, wizards. Truthbusters. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the proof makers. <laughs> <laughs> Shen <laughs> evil Mythbusters. The proof we gotta, we gotta keep going, guys. <laughs> Shenron dove into the water and slithered under the waves, getting away from this hero with the shining golden cock as fast as possible. <laughs> Fartima could not believe his eyes and shed one more tear for his friend, <laughs> this time in joy. Sudate walked under the deck as the sea sirens pushed it afloat towards the island. As they went to give each other their secret cock handshake, <laughs> a sailor called out. Shenron was barreling down on them once again on. from a distance. What's a secret cock handshake? You'll see it in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it means. X rated, by the way. It's basically that thing of when you do like the little like the, like, dap, okay. slap, and then grab. But when you're. Okay, so dap, slap, and then a cock. You're right? a little cock handshake. I thought you were like. Dap slap with the cock. Yeah, and then slight docking, but that's <laughs> only for the best. Also, also, yeah, yeah, in the movie, by the way, the handshake, it's not seen. And then they, they whisper, yeah, they whisper they no homo to each it's, other it's, as they do it. In the movie, it's Chris Pratt does it for real. Or does it for real. Yeah. <laughs> He's not, it's not a double unit. It's like, it's straight up Chris Pratt. He does it. You'll be surprised. He got his foreskin actually yeah, it's not, apply. It's <laughs> <laughs> And that was a good one. the stitches involved. In and out burger. Yeah, the movie's gonna be crazy. Trump plays Kevin. I mean, what? <laughs> you really can't go wrong. Well, he already has a boat. He's fine. I mean, who else yeah. buys friends with money? Like, yeah. it's, it's right. on casting. Yeah, honestly. You know what? You're not wrong. Great job on this one, too. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep this rolling. Anyway. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Fartimo could not believe his eyes and shed a tear for his friend. This time, enjoy. Sudate walked onto the deck. Oh, as they pushed it towards the island. I already said that. As they went to give each other the secret cock handshake, Sailor called out. Shenron was barreling down them once again from a distance. But suddenly, Fartimo had an idea. He yelled to Sudate and his other friends to taunt the serpent in, and ran to the back. He didn't know it, but he'd been training for this moment his entire life. He launched over the back of the ship, where the great snake had already put many holes. Working as fast as he could, he tore away wood and fashioned metal into a band around the back of the hull, and just in the nick of time, jumped back on board as Shenron slammed into the back of the ship and went right through it? Suddenly the snake realized it was trapped in a ship-sized cock sheath. Oh! 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 You can't be serious. Measure twice, cut once. <laughs> Sudate and Jimmy Heaters jumped in unison over the back railing and brought down all their might onto this beast's neck, severing it once and for all. Mm. Mm. Shot his fucking head off in the ship, dude. Jimmy Heaters pa popped back on the deck first, pulled out a pack of Marbreds, and sucked <laughs> down five six faster than a crack whore working for five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Sudate calmly wiped his dildo sword off and said, 
no one fucks my friends but me. <laughs> <laughs> Senior Keith sheepishly smiled with a blush. We'll unpack that later. <laughs> the old friends all embraced. <laughs> Happy to be a full crew again. Minus all the other dead sailors and cooks and waitstaff and stuff. <laughs> Kevin. And Kevin. No, 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 that was about it. Purposefully left out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they knew their adventure wasn't over yet. As the sirens dropped the ship, slash severed serpent head on the beach, the bloody crew looked ahead at the sun setting over the island of snakes, preparing for the third leg, penis, of the <laughs> <laughs> Not knowing that their greatest peril lay still ahead. Two miles in the distance, a small hunched figure on the hill looked out over the beach from under her hood, snickering quietly. <laughs> <laughs> And slowly, as they looked past out into the ocean, a head popped out from the serpent. What's up, guys? <laughs> Stop! 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 Stop, baby! Stop! So glad you killed a snake before it digested me! God damn it, Sid. Fuck! Man. Part three coming next year. Oh! Wow. Oh my Amazing. god. Amazing. Yeah. I don't know if that was the the old English gravity bong I did mid story, but that was the fucking that, that I was enraptured the whole time. Mm. Was that so was good. riveting. You guys are gonna have to listen to part one to decipher the Did anybody uh, else draw a parallel <laughs> between <laughs> Kevin and Flyman? A little oh, bit yeah. of Flyman energy. Kevin seems like the BCU version of Flyman. Mm -hmm. yeah. he, he had the Flyman energy. Yeah, the really Flyman energy. So good from the fucking of animals. To the getting a giant <laughs> snake through boat. your boat and the getting the same with the cock horse sheath. The cock horse sheath. Absolutely. The what is cock sheath? Is what the it is. Tie, the tie it's high end. high end. That, that is, is fucking I mean, crazy. Like, it's like an early someone life. comes in, they're like, yo, Farisima, is this whole ship just a giant cock sheath? Has been all along. Always <laughs> <laughs> oh, has been. <laughs> Well, I, I certainly hope they can get the SS Cockshee Seaworthy again. Oh, I'm sure they can. Because it's called like USS, here, guys. The USS. USS. No, it's the BSS. The BSS. 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 Okay. 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 Yeah, we exactly. gotta be careful with this SS shit. We <laughs> literally introduced Hitler earlier. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We like hyped him up. Keep on wizarding. Keep on counting numbers. You know, you don't have an episode two. I don't have an episode two. This could be episode two. This, this, is, this is episode two. twelve. No one ever know. Episode this is twelve. This is only the second one I've been in, so yeah. it's two to me. Yeah, there you go. Episode two, it's and then the one after that could be episode five because you already got three and four. Yeah, we'll, we'll <laughs> we're doing it like Star Wars, but dumber. Yeah, Star Wars, but <laughs> even the, worse. That's worse the machete means. order. Well, it, it depends if you can't like back in my day. We didn't have these fancy computers and microphones. We just read stories about cocks and laughed. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> There's actually been hundreds of episodes. Yeah. All right. This was back in uh, so this is in Star Wars. <laughs> this is not like a sequel or the prequel. This is called the Shane DeLorean. The Shane DeLorean. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yellow text. On it's a spinoff in the same universe. Yes. <laughs> with a sick intro. Just as important. Right. Also, baby Yoda memes. Episode TBD. The baby first two Yama. words are uh, crimes and islands. So we get those out of the way now. No, just, no, I'm kidding. But, <laughs> that has the title. Crimes, comma, Welcome to Crime Island. <laughs> All right. Our story begins as we see an overhead shot of the highest security prison this side of Bongstone. It's a prison on an island inside a volcano inside your mind. <laughs> This prison has been around since the first sin. No, not the snake and forbidden fruit thing. I'm talking about the people who directed, filmed, and starred in Two Goblins, One Chalice. <laughs> <laughs> no! It was only two very multi-talented goblins, but as soon as they locked them up, they threw away the key inside of volcanic lava. Mm. That's the only, you, yeah, as they should. I hope that nobody ever finds it. It's on Bong Tube, but I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Bong Tube! Bong Tube! <laughs> <sighs> okay, fade in to present day. Time flash. Cut to. 
A new group of prisoners are shown, and we pan to a list of rules on the wall, reading, No fucking escaping, no fucking fighting, and no butt stuff without saying no homo. <laughs> <laughs> That's the rules. The group of Those are prisoners. good laws. <laughs> those are good laws, not for nerds. <laughs> you can follow those laws. Dude, no, we'll make fun of you. A group of new prisoners are pushed in by a guard who locked the door behind them. Uh, among them are a hairy looking creature, a half orc, Larry, and a series of other shady looking characters. Who the fuck is Larry? Don't worry about it. He'll be dead soon. <laughs> no! yeah, he's dying soon, it's fine. <laughs> Keenan, I'm sorry if you're years. listening. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone found themselves forming a circle, and the crowd began to s chant a single question. What are you in for? No one spoke at first. Well, I'm in for getting white wizard wasted and taking my girlfriend's horse for a high-speed paladin chase. <laughs> <laughs> Been there. Oh yeah? Well, I'm in for making out with my own head in public, said a two-headed demon tiefling. <laughs> <laughs> no! Scarjo! Scarjo! <laughs> Everyone wondered if that was incest or masturbation. <laughs> <laughs> Someone quickly changed the topic. <clears throat> well, what about you, peg leg guy? Yar, I pirated music. Oh, oh, well, that's not so bad. As in, I hired pirates to kidnap a band of bards and put them in my dungeon to play my favorite songs for me. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone agreed that was a power move and should not be that illegal. <laughs> hey, what about you, guy wearing four scarves? Uh, I, um, I broke out of horny jail. <laughs> no! <laughs> he touched his pointer fingers together shyly. They sent me here. For now. Is this <laughs> Franklin? It wasn't Franklin, but I kind of wanted to do He has four scarves? Four scarves on, he's looking good. <laughs> Franklin's gay cousin. <laughs> Bonklin? <All right. laughs> Let's call him Bonklin. Bonklin is in fucking high level prison. Benjamin Bonklin. <laughs> <laughs> um, then a friendly goblin voice chimed in. Oh well, I, I ripped the tag off my mattress. <laughs> You're not supposed to do that. Oh, you fucked. Said a friendly looking goblin with eyes the size of a moon. I killed a man named Rave the Rapper, said <gasps> Shady Slim, a wizard with a zipped up hoodie robe covered in spaghetti stains. Oh shit, that was a callback. Wow. <laughs> oh my god, you fucking killed Rave the Rapper. <laughs> oh my, oh my. Fuck. Everyone had shared Classic. their stories. Halloween special, go check it out. Go, go back. For more on out. that character. Bro, Bro. among others. Spooky Town? Spooky Town. Kooky Town, more Spooky like. Town. More like Kooky Town. <laughs> he fucking knows. Um, there was only one man who hadn't shared his story. It was the furry creature. And it was also literally Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> he spoke. Ah, uh, my story is a long-winded one. I doubt you'd want to hear about old hairy Bigfoot. Yes, please, Bigfoot. Everyone loves your stories. In unison, <laughs> everyone said, except for Shady Slim, who made it rhyme with orange somehow. <laughs> Alright, alright, simmer down, he said. Make sure you're comfortable. Come over here, little gnome. You may sit on my lap just this once if you like. <laughs> the gnome crawled up onto the hairy lap and looked up at the furry man in wonder. I used to live in a village full of creatures, just like hairy old me, but none of them were as large in the foot area as me. Not to mention that I got a dick like a tree branch. <laughs> But unluckily for me, it's a bonsai tree branch. <laughs> so everyone just called me Bigfoot. <laughs> Bastard is revealed. <laughs> I, um, I lived on top of the highest forest mountain cave, which I acquired with my Bigfoot energy. I wake up every morning what? radiating success and raw sex appeal. I went down to the town market trying to find some sweet Heelys in my size. But alas, Sir Skechers did not craft footwear in my size. No, no foot? Skechers for Bigfoot. No Skechers for Bigfoot. Co cobbler? The Dinkum Cobbler. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, you the Dinkum Cobbler and Bigfoot need to hang out. <laughs> they could be friends, that's all I'm saying. Um, Bigfoot slumped his big furry shoulders and arms so that his knuckles dragged the cobblestone beneath him. 
He began his long, treacherous walk back to his cave. He stepped in thorns and brambles along the path. His big feet were too large a target and caught every bristle in his path. He ignored the pain in his feet and chose to focus on the pain in his heart. Oh. Fucking fuck. <laughs> I need to find some shoes that complement my baller as fuck lifestyle. He <laughs> thought to himself. <laughs> I need to find someone who can make me shoes that can handle me letting these dogs do their thing. <laughs> <laughs> so Bigfoot started running to the biggest city you could see on the horizon. It took him not that many Bigfoot steps to get where he wanted to go. <laughs> However, the steps became more hasty as Bigfoot's rage and impatience heightened. He forgot to look whereupon he stepped and crushed many a tiny gnome, fairy, slash hobbit, slash orphanage under his hairy feelers. <laughs> <laughs> slash orphanage. Yo. Fuck the orphans. <laughs> Sorry, I'm sipping this. Killing at least eight small woodland fantasy creatures and 14 bugs who would never see their family again. Also, one of the bugs was packing and had the voice of an angel. <laughs> oh my god. That was, <clears throat> Sorry, I'm gonna do that. Song bug? <laughs> yeah, you got it. <laughs> oh my god, that's terrible, BF, said the friendly gnome sitting upon his lap inside his prison cell, breaking the flashback. Yeah, uh, don't call me BF, said Bigfoot. I'm not your boyfriend, and I'm not your best friend, and I, my name isn't actually even Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually Jake. <laughs> Everybody shout now my big feet like I don't already know. These things are a curse. Do you know how many rakes I've stepped on? <laughs> <laughs> he started crying tears large enough to snuff out candle flame into his hairy beard. Anyway. It wasn't long and oh sorry. <clears throat> anyway, it wasn't long until they followed the massive footprint murder trail, and my hairy ass was sent to the slammer. That was all just him explaining why he was in prison. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> there you go. We got one more part, and Drew just went downstairs. Just gonna make it even funnier. Um, <laughs> <laughs> suave in, uh, Spanish Antonio Banderas' S voice. I hope I can do this. That's almost as sad of a story as how I got here. Come yes! <laughs> it's Puss in Boots! Everyone turned to look at the figure sitting shadowed in the corner. He stepped forward into the light of a single window beam, and the illumination revealed the visage <laughs> of a half that. Orc, scarred almost beyond recognition. Almost. Everyone what? Everyone gasped as the most interesting half-orc in the world smiled a grin that could make a homeless man consider purchasing a home security system. <laughs> he was known for being the face of a continent-wide grog label called Dos Hexes. Yes. It was widely drank in Mexico. <laughs> yeah, of course. Hello, my friends. <laughs> Hello, my friends. Yes, it is I, the most interesting half orc <laughs> Uh, it is I, uh, the most interesting half orc in the world, Sir Gore. No! Oh! He's back! Gas and shuffling uh, to the farthest corner. Uh, um, <clears throat> gas and shuffling to the farthest corner could be heard as he sat down in front of his now captive audience. So, you want to share stories of how you ended up in the slammer? I've got a story for you, but you'll wish you had heard it. You, you'll wish you hadn't heard it once I'm done weaving this tale. Oh shucks, I'm sure we're gonna love it, said the gnome who decided the best martial art to learn to prepare him for prison was the art of making friends. <laughs> <laughs> He's not wrong. It's a true yeah. art. I fucked that one up. Um, one by one, an, unsur an unsure message, sure, we've got time, rang out around the room and the orc <laughs> began to speak. How does a man list his sins? In magnitude from lesser evils to the ones that truly haunt me at night. I heard you blew up an entire government. The <laughs> <laughs> <A> whole thing. <laughs> I, I choked on my jewel pot. <laughs> Did Drew just text got him? Oh wait, just kidding. That's for the recycling. Oh, <laughs> He's out recycling. That's Drew, for this is Sergor telling tales of how he ended up in prison. <laughs> it's going well, I promise. All right. Anyway. Sir Gore is apparently Antonio Banderas. <laughs> <laughs> He's the most interesting work, half work in the world. Sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, where was I? Those hexes. <laughs> Drinking some Mexico. We're almost done here. Um, bing bong. Ding dong. Um, so yeah, someone said I heard you blow up a whole government. 
Wow, you really stole the thunder from my uh, story, but uh, where am I? What the fuck? What the fuck? Dude, this guy is lost at this jail. <laughs> He's just in, like, yo, where am I? Where, where am, I? am I? It must be tough to be in prison. How do you manage um, <laughs> Dude, what? all I'm saying is if the earth is round, which I'm willing to believe, then I'm not going to believe magnets work. You know, like, I, it's either Earth is round or magnets are real. You don't get both. <laughs> you get one or the other, take it or leave it. So if you want me to believe in magnets, dude, this shit's flat as fuck. Like, you know? All right. <laughs> so the compass always ports, points towards How the edge com- of the flat Earth? Either, either <laughs> compasses or magnets. You can't tell me that compasses work because of magnets. Like, they work because of magnets. No, yeah. see? Yeah. No, no, that's what I'm saying. So, Get so, the fuck out of here. So either compasses are fake and the earth is round, That's or the earth is flat and compasses are always right. So because are, magnets are real. Because magnets are real. Magnets. And there's one thing a lot of similarities with one. the word magic. Have it's you ever noticed that? Rapidly. It's okay. It's oh, fine. Sorry. No, we're back. <laughs> fine. I, I'm done talking about magnets for another hour. Hold on. <laughs> you got me on that one. <laughs> Prompt for next time. Magnets. Magnets, magnets and roundness. Magnets, magnets and flat earth. <laughs> <laughs> I can easily write it down. I can work with that. Okay, sorry. All right, you're good. We got it. It doesn't matter how I got here. I have a plan to break us out. Alrighty? Damn, we've been here for like two minutes. I was hoping to get ripped first. <laughs> I haven't even done one push-up yet. Uh, sh- listen. This isn't... <laughs> listen. <laughs> I haven't even done one push-up yet. Yeah. <laughs> There isn't going to be a prison here when I leave, so I promise you, you're going to want to come with me. I'm going to need all the help I can get. But first, I'm going to need you to get me a few things. Does any of you have a knife? Everyone pulled out a D4 dagger out of some orifice or another <laughs> some orifice and dropped it in a pile before Sergor. Quick shots of different prisoners stealing keys, sharpening shivs, and cornering the, god, the, cornering the guards commences. Step one, secure the yeah. keys! <laughs> The guards cower behind their square tower shields as a shadowy mob with countless knives made out of scraps of wood and metal sharpened with actual weapons that they had already possessed are branded. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck was that? They had weapons and they were just like, they gotta make a shit first. Yeah. Like they already had the weapon. They had a dagger. And then they used the dagger to carve a shiv. Well, you never, heard a, story, you never heard a story of someone wielding a broadsword in jail. Yeah. You know, like, right, 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 come right. on, you gotta t- stay with the, like, stay with the times. This is not the first time in the clink. Like, you I gotta do wrong. what you gotta do. Everyone knows I was done. You can't use a broadsword in line for lunch. When is wrong. Not with that app. <laughs> they added another crime to their already long list and slayed the guards by stabbing them Caesar salad style with forks they yoinked from the cafeteria. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> So many in so many jokes. Yeah. <laughs> so many jokes at, at one time. Now's our chance, said Sergor, leading a party of escaped prisoners carrying a sturdy metal tower shield of the guards they had just slain. The volcano island is about to erupt. Hope you all know how to surf, said the orc slyly as he winked and flashed a tusky grin before grabbing his newly acquired shield and dropping off the side wall directly into the volcano's center. Whoa! Oh, I forgot it was all in a volcano. All in a volcano right island. <laughs> yeah, he's the most interesting orc in the he land. shield uh, surfed into an active volcano <laughs> as it's erupting. <laughs> a few of the others hesitated as the volcano began to, a rum- uh, to rumble. To a rumble. To a rumble. It is the Dos Equis. It makes me a rumble. Hello, my friends. You guys are ready to a rumble? I do not always drink beer, but when I do, I get fucking blacked out, my friends. (laughs) (laughs) It's erupting, so the two headed tiefling heads in unison. The smoke billowed out of the caldera like a man tried to hold back alcohol from coming out of his face hole. Slowly, the lava swelled into a giant wave and picked up Sir Gore and the other inmates upon their, sh- their shields, now surfboards, as it began to carry them up high across the walls of the prison. Dude, they're totally gonna escape. Sir Gore had been waiting for this volcano to erupt for so long. The moment he felt the earth begin to shake, he knew he could ride that magma wave straight back to the mainland. Oh, yeah. Back to a life. Back to a bedroom all his own. To a world he yearned for every moment. He waited for the volcano to erupt, its sweet lava freedom all over the place. <laughs> I, feel Hot. Like I, had, I had a line about punishment, which is not one of the prompts. <laughs> Dude, it's in a prison on an island. You're fine. Uh, he surfed that magma wave 
off into the sunset and never looked back. That's hot. Until he did, and Bigfoot was right behind him. Yes! Oh. Doing a sick hang ten. Yes! And then hang yeah. ten big hairy toes right off the front side of your lava bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah, Bigfoot. Oh, Let's God. go! That oh, scene is going to be a cinematic masterpiece. <laughs> it's gonna look good in the movie. Oh my <laughs> god, dude. It's gonna be like Star Wars Episode 3 lava scene, but with more surfboards and less lightsabers. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Can I play Bigfoot? Bigger Bigfoot? feet. You can <laughs> even bigger feet. I was yeah. imagining Vin Diesel as Bigfoot. I'm just. I'm just <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude, he voiced oh, like Groot. Groot. He'd be perfect. Yeah, he I am. Bigfoot. You know, Vin oh, Diesel. Oh, oh, <laughs> I think his most underrated uh, role, though, is as the Iron Giant. Whoa, you went Iron Giant. That's Vin Diesel. Super Iron Giant. Yeah. Yeah. Go back, Big go feet. back and listen to it. It's fucking Vin Diesel. If I he just like, said family, you'd be like Vin Diesel. <laughs> <laughs> I and know that guy. Like the whole time you were voicing him, I was imagining Vin Diesel, but super hairy. Yeah, but like, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Super Bigfoot. Yeah, and honestly, <laughs> Antonio Banderas plays Antonio Banderas. Obviously. Yeah, obviously. yeah. Obviously. yeah. Uh, you mean that is so poor? I, I think the dwarf is played by. Danny DeVito. Danny, Danny DeVito, DeVito. Oh, yeah. I mean, two yeah. headed tiefling. He plays every dwarf. In yeah, yeah. All <laughs> we, get, we get two fucking Lindsay Lohan. Two headed tiefling. Okay. No, okay. I will say, I love how the story's like them all introducing why they're in prison. Yeah, and I was gonna say John to Bigfoot, Depp. and that's like half of the story <laughs> is how Bigfoot got to jail. <laughs> he wanted to get Healy, so he ran to town and didn't look where he was going, <laughs> and ended up in murder prison. Uh, all, all, murder all of the orphans played by the Colorado Spring was... School for the Deaf and Blind. Yeah. <laughs> Along with the symphony orchestra. Featuring a percussion oh, track. Oh my God, my Featuring a percussion track. Already. <laughs> so they can feel it in their hearts. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, thanks for letting me read my story. We got one more for us. It's not a story. We know, 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 we I mean, you can if you want. I don't know what they'll do, but you just want to hold on no, to the comfort for the dice. Yeah. Do. Okay. Uh, actually, there is an optional drinking game involved with this story as well. Okay, we're all doing it. Is this is it more yeah. than one beer worth? Um, maybe. I don't like, think. I've... Take a take a sip every time I say the words visage, presently, or sus. <laughs> okay. Okay. Right. He says the word visage in every episode. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> One point one. Yeah, 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 that was one of your comments. You were like, like, <laughs> why do you say this so much? I'm like, I don't know. I, I like how the word sounds. It's, it's a good word. It's it's a good is. Word. It's a good fancy little word. Visage presently or sus. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> like we got a lot of Hitler's visage in the first story. Yeah, yeah. a lot of Hitler visage going on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This episode is, is this the point? Incredible. Is this the point where we're supposed to say, "Hey guys, racism is wrong." Hey, yes. we love the Jews. Sponsor, I love yo, several I don't know, Jews. I don't know if you know this, but our fifth sponsor, the, the Black Jews. Lives Matters movement. Yes. <laughs> to be to be clear, we disagree with Hitler. Yeah. We disagree with Columbus. Everyone. We disagree with Black Lives Don't Matter. Literally, <laughs> literally the phrase is everyone in Bongstone thinks that dude is a fucking chode. Yeah, yeah, yeah imagine exactly. like, I, I post on I post on social media. I disagree with Black Lives Don't Matter. <laughs> <laughs> it's a double negative, which equals a positive. Yeah, I know, but do you think anyone gives a fuck? <laughs> on Facebook, no. <laughs> okay, so it does start with like a little prologue of sorts. But it's gonna get into a more of a uh, oh, I'm more of a dialogue. I'm pro so much, so much preface. Yeah. If is, you haven't told from our, session? if you guys haven't told from our stories, we are prologue. So yes, yeah. so let's do it. We are prologue. Pro 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 All right, pro so let's just get started. It was another Monday Eve in this lower Middle East uppermost section of Halifax, Nova Scotia. <laughs> Wait, I'm, I really don't have a great idea of where this is happening. Oh man, even that. It's basically where the Vikings live. Like the okay. suburbs and the and the farmlands. The turnips were ripe, the moon shone bright, and presently, drink. A particular set God, of preteen siblings found themselves home alone once again. I feel like preteens are your primary protagonist. <laughs> <laughs> He's two for two on preteens. Paper ruffled, they opened the letter. <laughs> 
Jack and Blanya, if you're reading this, your mother and I are presently on a week-long sex bender. We're staying at the Chungus County Bed and Breakfast located on 69 Boink Street, Pound Town, USA. Try to make this pizza last until next Wednesday. Love, Dad. <laughs> Yes, I just checked. This is, in fact, not the plain one. My bad. <laughs> At least he cared enough to leave it. No. <laughs> They're trying, oh, to make sure they, trying to make sure there ain't no, like, <laughs> entire episode spawning mushrooms <laughs> on this pizza. <laughs> uh, mushroom pizza again, Jack protested. Why do our parents keep trying to drug us? Oh, uh, down the hatch. Jack, don't eat that. Do it again? Jack, don't eat that. We're kids. And, and let all this pizza go to waste? Blanya darted over to the rotisserie phone and dialed 1-800-ORB-DS as quickly as her little fingies would allow. Hello? Uh, hey, Orbeez, it's Blanya. Oh my god, Blanya, it's been a minute, huh? How's Zach doing? Look, we need you to come over here and help us out. We're home alone with nothing to eat but mushroom pizza. Again. Did you eat it yet? <laughs> <laughs> no, wait, what do you mean yet? I'm sorry, kid, but my hands are tied. Unless you guys are tripping sack on those shrews, we can't come over. Them's the rules. <laughs> Fine. Quick. All right, Jack, down the hatch. Baba Booey. <laughs> Baba Booey. Is both mine? Yes. All right, and so now... Cut to knock, knock, cock, I wrote. <laughs> <laughs> hey there, kiddos, it's your old pal Orbeez the Big Friendly Dragon, and I brought all my dragon friends over to party! Dude, these, that's you guys. They definitely ain't These the guys, pizza. if you haven't heard, these guys are gangster as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> they, might, they may sound fun and friendly. <laughs> They're not. <laughs> I'm inclined to let them in. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, so now we have a choice. Eat the pizza. Okay, so we have we have a few characters you can pick from. We have Jack and Blanya. Is this choose your own fantasy fiction? Choose your own character. I know Bongzilla is in the mix. I know Shane called Bongzilla. Oh, anyone can be Bongzilla. Uh, sure? What about Motherfuckasaurus Rex? You can be Motherfuckasaurus Rex. <laughs> That's another character. I want to hear the other two. <laughs> um. Yeah, so like, I don't know, just take it. Orbeez? Orbeez? I'm, I'm Orbeez. <laughs> <laughs> Orbeez is my favorite. No, I'm, I'm already Orbeez. <laughs> Orbeez sounds like Bill Cosby after 15 packs of cigarettes. I guess you be a girl? Oh, this is gonna get better. Okay, so yes, here we go. Here we go. We're, We're so sorry, in. Chris. Keep going. This is some tasty <laughs> mushroom pizza. Here we go. It's time. Okay, who wants to play fucking Uno or something? <laughs> <laughs> okay, what kind of what kind of game do you want for a few seconds? Uh, I would just like to ask, in Nova Scotia, can you marry your brother? <laughs> Well, that's a cry and shame. <laughs> okay, it's, motherfucker. It's almost, it's almost like Listen, he's some kind of cow's ball cry. And he's like, he's just because I keep giving your Vin Diesel. <laughs> my, uh, my, 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 my uh, Bigfoot? Your Bigfoot, yeah. Uh, hit the ball and do it, get along. <laughs> you, just okay? because, yeah, I, yeah. just because yeah, I keep saying motherfucker, motherfucker doesn't mean I want you to fuck your mother, motherfucker. <laughs> I, respect, I respect that. Here's the thing: I might not do shrooms, but you give me something long and circular shaped, and I will put it in my mouth. So let me hit that bong. <laughs> I don't know why I'm from the south. She's twelve. <laughs> she's twelve. She had a rough childhood. Well, I mean, I guess in Canada, I let's say. Yeah, she's actually from Nova Scotia. <laughs> it's okay. Oh, you want to do Midwest? I do Midwest. I want to start the talking and ferociously <laughs> off topic. Technically, yeah. Nova Scotia incest is not a capital. We need crime. to focus. You should never have made it interactive. <laughs> it's more you like should never have made it interactive. Right. 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 All of a sudden, the lights flicker off. <laughs> Walked up and flipped the lights. The, the, when all of a sudden the lights cut out, what the who the the hallowed halls and the ballowed balls are suddenly filled with a blood curling scream. 
Majestic creature. That dark gray creature. Hot, beautiful gray creature. Oh, well, this is worse than last year's family reunion, give eh? Us like a, give, yeah. us, give us like a good death rattle. Hot purple blood oh, spread in a puddle across the floor, much like your mom's legs after I take her to kick in chicken and then stick my dick in. <laughs> oh, we get away with that. Okay. Yeah, that kind of thing around here, eh? Oh no. Motherfuckasaurus Rex's once bright, glowing, uh, dark gray eyes had gone cold, <laughs> dull, and even darker gray. <laughs> Orbeez kneels over his corpse and gently caresses his fallen companion's cold, lifeless visage oh one final God, time. Motherfucker. Drink to motherfuckers. He does that eh? thing where he closes his eyelids with two of his claws, like in movies. <laughs> oh my God, damn, damn! Which one of you sussy bakalakas just Great. murdered my friend? <laughs> <laughs> There's an imposter among us. Oh no. A, a capital crime has been committed. <laughs> oh, no. And whoever done it shall face the capital punishment. Oh uh, yeah, I think Tanya's being pretty sus right now. And I'm gonna figure out who did it. <laughs> Jack! If that even is your real name. <laughs> Orbeez then no, attempts. I'm you're Jack. He's Tanya. I'm Orbeez the then fucking oh, rushes shit. forward, attempts to rip off Jack's face like a Scooby Doo villain for like 20 minutes. Oh, you got it. It wasn't me. Eh? Oh, he, that's not very neighborly right, of right. you. I was out shoveling the driveway. All right, you're clean. You're clean. The face is real. All right, I think it's time we take a vote. We all write down who we think the imposter is. And whoever gets the most votes shall get tied up and waterboarded. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so get out a, a, a marker. Are you serious? <laughs> Can I vote even though I'm dead? Uh, sure. Yeah. Did we just write a name on this? I I, I was conflicted on whether I should have gone first or last. Oh, I wrote and I'm like, the back of this. I'm like 38 ounces deep and 42 ounces of smoke deep, and <laughs> I, I feel like I'm doing good. That amount is illegal in Florida. You're right. That's why I'm in Colorado. It's a right capital now, right? crime, believe it or not. <laughs> it's a capital crime. Okay, well, well, well that there, that's breakfast in Nova Scotia. No, it's Southern again. God damn it. Urban New Square. Midwest and Southern are hard to flip between. Wait, who am I voting okay, for? Stick, stick it in here. I wrote mine on You wrote nice. Bonzilla, Motherfucker's Horse Rex. Okay. <laughs> okay, you wrote it. You're voting there. Um, Was that our emergency <laughs> meeting? Uh, yeah, it's the emergency meeting right now. The tits. All right. Okay, now we got all the votes. <laughs> <laughs> so let, me, let, me, let me get in here. Open them up. All right, me, uh, one more vote over here. All right. Okay, one for Orbeez. Oh shit. We one for Bonzilla. <laughs> one for Blondia, sus. <laughs> and uh, first of all, fuck all of you. Drake, he said it. And one for uh, motherfucker. And uh, one for Freddy. Who the, is like, who the fuck is Freddy? Wow. That's a five-way tie right there. <laughs> is it Flood Knight? Oh my god, it's fucking Freddy! He's here! <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Oh no, eh? Hey, I got a really good oh, dentist no. to go see, eh? <laughs> oh my god, he's here! What are they gonna do? They killed him. Oh, I killed him. Right now. <laughs> All of a sudden, Freddy fucking Fazbear comes out from the closet. <laughs> His eyeballs twinkling in time with the music. In a motion so quick that it made the speed of light say whoa, Freddy bum rushed forward and slashed an Orby's stomach. And his entrails became his outtrails as they spilled out. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, that hurts like a motherfucker! Oh. <laughs> Fuck. Motherfucker Sarge will be proud! <laughs> and with Orbeez's departure, the animatronic bear sent his glowing eyes upon the rest of you motherfuckers. 
He spares but a moment to adjust his top hat and bow tie, a moment you could be spending RP running away <laughs> as, he as he charges forward. Oh no! This is really scary, Chris. Now, right which one of you fellas is the real Dirty Dan? <laughs> The robot slices and dices with those long, razor-sharp adamantine claws. And he's what? coming straight for you, Bungus, so you better watch out. Whoa, you oh. mean Bongzilla? Come oh, here. Watch out, Bongzilla, eh? I'm dragging these claws across your neck real quick. And then fucking, <laughs> what are you gonna do? You gonna dodge? You gonna fucking... I'm, I'm gonna hit this joint real quick. All right, <laughs> roll, roll D20. <laughs> I'm just inventing shit off the fly right now. That's a 17. A 17, all right. Like I say, you, you, you yeah. smoked the joint so impressively that he just like, all right, yeah, mad props. He just <laughs> hey, 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 and now good. he's coming for Jack. What are you doing? <laughs> Jack, that's you. That's you. That's, that's me. Yeah. I'm a girl. <laughs> no, no, Jack is real hungry. Jack's got to run out and rock a piss, and then he'll make up his mind. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say a piss or a piss? He's gonna rock a piss. <laughs> roll, roll a d20 for whatever that was. Performance. <laughs> oh, Jack won the 17, eh? We're all rolling 17. Was <laughs> that loaded dice over there? No, it's a real d20. Alright, 17 again. Oh, we'll Just like the work. fucking. What's his name? Zach Efron movie. Yeah, sure. <laughs> 17 again, yeah. Okay, you get oh, you go to you, you Freddy fucking lunges forward and he slashes, but you duck out of the way with your 17 and you do whatever the fuck you just said. He's gonna take a, he took a piss. <laughs> he took a piss on his electronics and he fucking short circuits. He's like, <laughs> 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 just a servo shutting down. And then the, the Windows 98 shutdown noise. I'll edit that in post. <laughs> <laughs> And lo, the suspicious individual had been defeated. Presently, he short-circuited, and the sparks he gave off caused his furry visage to catch on fire. Wow, great. You all watched the flames eat away at all the flammable bits of the murderer's body until only the endoskeleton and the foreskin remained. <laughs> They're fucking indestructible. This is me out of something else. Okay. Well, we defeated him? Yeah, he you did. Let's go! You <laughs> beat him on there, did we? Let's go! I you pissed on him! I rolled a 17 and you shit! Yeah, I'm kind of plus Always yeah, piss okay. on him. Alright. Oh, wow, that was a good, that was a good improv at the end. Yeah, that was, on his boots, that was the 40 talking for most of us. <laughs> wow. So yeah, the robot the voice how, was just flare of the moment? You have to suck in. So as you talk. Oh, oh, oh you're, you're giving voice to you. You're asking about Wait, the, the robot voice I had planned. Yeah, because oh, okay. he's a robot, of course. It makes perfect sense. It was actually point you asking for like the purpose of the robot. Like I wasn't expecting that. Well, at all. Freddy comes out. I, like, I had that plan. We all vote for who it is, and there's a vote for Freddy. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody <laughs> votes for some <laughs> random dude. No. <laughs> we all just are like pointing at each other, or, like you're in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. so what you, that was great. <laughs> doing yeah, awesome, that. I think. Dude, wow. I, I, I wanted a little more uh, Orbeez, uh, being Orbeez, but what? you know, I understand you had to Orbeez I'm guys just, fucking rocked. But I'm, was this I'm a so trip or no? Was this all just in their head? <laughs> okay, let's let's <laughs> be a little post credit scene real quick. <laughs> okay, okay, stop, stop, stop. Okay. All right, back after <laughs> the credits. After the credits, okay, sure. Fucking Z uh, Jack and Blanya chilling at home, just woke up from the fucking most wild, crazy, fucking vivid ass trip ever that up a 13 year old and a 12 year old could ever have. And Jack actually just pissed his pants. <laughs> <laughs> you wake up, you wake up, and you just you see like fucking like there's blood everywhere. Fucking Orbeez is like long is under the table, and. All right. Yeah. This was not a dream. Oh. Yeah, no. There's like oh. a fucking flammable, like, there's like a, like, yeah, the Freddy's exo and endoskeleton is just in a charred husk in the corner. What, what about his There's burn person? marks on the floor. Oh. What are you going to do? You better clean that shit up. Oh, Jackie, I think you had another one of your blackouts, eh? Wee, <laughs> 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 Turning into Franklin slowly. Oh, no. <laughs> what seems to be the problem here? Well, I gotta say it's just for free. it's just me being neighborly, but your Mounties look really hungry. Would you care for a slice of pizza? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Bravo. 
Hi, everybody. Credits roll. Let's go. I brought a fucking single tear to my eye. That was beautiful. Wow. Thank you, bro. I was like, wait up. I literally did not. I think that was your putting that. You guys are professionals. That was fucking perfect. The perfect ending to such a classic tale. I apologize only to the person who must edit this. That would be me. I apologize more to the person who has to listen to it. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on.